Patrick, you us a copy of the. <coughs> we don't have a copy of that. Morning. How you doing? If I could have your attention, please, if you're willing and able, if you would stand for the invocation, remain standing for the flag pledge. I'd like to uh, uh, recognize Pastor Chris Vaughn, Grace Summit Church, and ask him if he would do the invocation. Reverend Vaughn. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you have given us. We thank you, Father, that we have the opportunity to not only assemble, but to worship in this great country. We thank you that your hand has been upon it, and we thank you that we can humble ourselves and ask you to continuously be upon it. Holy Spirit, we ask you to um, anoint these gentlemen, anoint everyone here with your spirit, so their eyes can see, their ears can hear, and their hearts can know what best serves this county, what best serves the employees, what best serves all of the people, so that life can be good. You said and told us and commanded us to pray for them so that life may be good for us. So, Father, we ask you for that. And, Father, also, because of recent events, we thank you and we ask you for your daily protection and keeping over every police officer, every fireman, everyone in public safety, and that, Father, your hand would keep them safe and their hands would enable them and protect them and give them the equipment and the resources that they need to do their job. We thank you, Father, for it. We thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. With the Henry County Board of Commissioners, 9 a.m. Tuesday, March, your first meeting come to order. Uh, what is that about? Okay. What I would like to do on the agenda, one is we're going to remove item 13. There would be uh, exhibit 13. It'd be item X. It'd be item 16. And we're going to remove it from the agenda. And we're going to probably post it back on the 315 agenda. So if you'll make a note of that. The second item that I would like to address. Mike's on My mic is not on. Oh, it is now. Can you hear me now? All right. Good morning. Okay. Uh, you want to start over? Would that work for y'all? Back it up. Uh, on the agenda, I would like to make some adjustments. Uh, one is I would like to ask that the board uh, take off splash item number 16, exhibit 13. It's not ready, so we'll hear that at the next meeting. Another item I've observed here that we have uh, public comments. We have, uh, it appears to be five. And out of the five, it appears to be four is related to annexation. So what I would like to do is the, the public comment section says citizens are allowed to voice county related concerns, opinion that are not listed on the agenda during this portion of the meeting. So what I'd like to do with the, with the uh, amendment to this is to allow uh, 15 minutes when we get to that item. Uh, 
and it is item number uh, presentation annexation. Uh, it would be county uh, attorney. It'd be under 15 C. So without any objections, what I would do, since it is uh, pertinent, is to allow 15 minutes for public comments. Uh, and the four people that asked to speak, does that meet your approval? Otherwise, I will, I will hear you independently on the five minutes. So if no objections to that, then I'll open the floor for 15 minutes total at that, during that time and everything will be related. Not seeing any. Uh, would somebody move to adopt the budget, uh, correction, the uh, agenda of this meeting? So move. As amended, have a motion. Second. Second. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. So move. And I'm going to ask the clerk if she'll be kind enough to elude my attention when we get to the annexation about the 15 minutes. I got a note here, but I want to make sure I don't. We're going to open the floor up for 15 minutes. Okay. Next, we'll have discussion of the date fund oversight committee by the Honorable Ernest D. Blunt. Good morning. Let me appear here today in front of you. Um, I'm here to address and discuss with you DATE funds. And DATE is an acronym for Drug Abuse Treatment and Education. These funds um, are collected by statute um, and forwarded to the county um, and it's put into a fund to help treat people with drug abuse and alcohol abuse problems. Um, the funds come from what we call add-ons to, um, to certain offenses. Um, there are three offenses, um, alcohol, drug, and uh, offenses. One is DUI, the other one is possession of drugs, and then possession of alcohol by minors. Now each one of those have a base fine. In addition to that, um, the uh, add-on or the date funds are added to it. For example, if the fine is $500, when you add the date, uh, 250 is added to it, and that's what is forwarded to the county. And that's to be collected from all the courts that handle those kind of cases, including the municipal courts, state court, and superior court. Now, at this particular time, um, the state court of Henry County, of which I'm a judge, one of the four that serve Henry County, is collecting 60% of the total date funds throughout the county because we deal a lot with DUIs, possession of marijuana, and uh, youngins in, in, uh, uh, with possession in their uh, possession of alcohol. Um, last year, Henry County forwarded, or the, the state court of Henry County forwarded $102,000 into date, and as, um, as of this time, through last month, it was uh, $50,350. These funds are distributed among what we call accountability courts, and they consist of the DUI court, which is, is the court that I preside over. Uh, there is an adult drug court program, which Judge Amaro presides over, and also uh, the uh, human resources court, or what uh, is called mental health court. Uh, those are the, the, uh, the courts that receive those uh, funds and benefits. Um, These courts are funded by two different income, sources of income. One are, are uh, um, state uh, gives us uh, funds to help operate our courts, and those are called grants. Uh, we have grants coming in every year that we apply for. The uh, Board of Commissioners always approves our applications before we start, and we take that money, and part of that money is used to fund our programs. Uh, the balance of the funds for our courts is date, and that's, that's all that there is, those two sources of income. There is a spreadsheet there in front of you that I put up on, uh, <clears throat> up on the bench there before we got started, and uh, I got those figures from the county employees here, Ms. Sorrow. If we continue to draw down the date funds at the rate that we are now, date funds will be gone by 2020, which means the programs would just fall and go away. And I, I know that it's just 2016, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to alert you folks to where we're going and what's happening here. And at some point in time, 
um, there's going to have to be a contribution by you to uh, help with these programs that are very beneficial to the county and very important to a lot of people. Um, now, my purpose here today is to make the accountability courts accountable. I'm suggesting to you that you set up an oversight committee and then that committee uh, recommend to you how the date funds are to be distributed among the courts. Because right now there is no committee, there's no, it's just the judges are asking for the money and we're getting the money, but it's not allocated uh, based upon need or based upon who's getting the money, where it's coming from or anything like that. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make the accountability courts accountable for the amount of money that comes in on date and to make a recommendation to you to review the date funds, review the needs of the various courts, and uh, make a recommendation to you as how those date funds should be spent. Um, and I have talked with the county attorney. We've talked about this on several different occasions in the last uh, committee compromise that we talked about, our composition rather, that we talked about was be five members. Uh, judge Amaro, the Spear Court judge that handles um, drug court and human resource court or mental health court, um, um, he would have one appointee. I would have one appointee and the Board of Commissioners would have three. And we're suggesting that of those three, that uh, one of them have a background in financial stuff like Ms. Sorrow or somebody in the financial end of the county. That there be somebody with a social uh, services background to, uh, to be on that committee as well and then somebody with a legal background. Um, I'm just so concerned that uh, we're going to get to a point and I, I may not even be the judge at that point, but we may get to, to the point where we can't uh, fund the programs without help of the county from the general funds. And that's what I'm suggesting today is for you, to, you guys to set up this committee and let the committee review and let the committee let you know what they think should be spent and how much and how much should be contributed by the county to these programs. Um, that has been said that, well, let's just don't, don't do anything and just use all the date funds. And then once the date funds are gone, let the programs go. But that won't solve anything because the date funds will continue to come in by statute. There's no authority to spend that money for anything other than um, these kind of accountability courts of which I'm a judge of one. So that's, that's why I'm here. And if you guys have any questions at all, I'll be glad to try to answer them if I can. I don't see any questions. I'm going to let the county manager make a note of that and okay. Uh, and if you, if you out decide to the board. if you're going to create the committee, if you'll let me know, I'll draw up the necessary papers to present it to the board. Um, but just let me know because I'm ready anytime. Okay? Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Next, comprehensive transportation plan. Uh, presenter Stacy Jordan and Jacobs Engineering. Good, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Um, Regarding our comprehensive transportation plan update, we have met with, with each of you, and I'm sure that you'll, you'll recall Michael Cray. Uh, also, Emily Ritzler is here. Um, they'll be giving a short presentation and answering questions. Um, so I'll let Michael take it away. Mr. Chairman, uh, Commissioners, thank you very much for uh, uh, letting us um, come before you today and give you an update on the transportation plan. Uh, my name is Michael Cray. I'm the uh, Deputy Project Manager um, with Jacobs Engineering. Um, the consulting um, group um, uh, responsible for developing the transportation plan. Um, quickly, this is a comp comprehensive transportation plan, meaning that we're looking at all modes of transportation in and around Henry County, roadways, um, sidewalks, bike trails. Um, we're looking at uses of, of the roadway system like, like freight and trucks as well, and also transit. This is a ARC um, grant program, and with that program, it takes a uh, typical three-step process for the, for the um, uh, plan development. There's an inventory of existing conditions, there's an assessment of current and future needs, and then there's a recommendations phase of the project. We have just wrapped up the um, uh, assessment of, of current and future needs phase of the plan, and we're moving into the recommendations phase 
of the, um, of the transportation plan. This is really where the rubber meets the road, where we look at, at projects and policy recommendations. So for the next phase of the plan, kind of what to expect, um, we are going to develop a prioritized list of transportation investments. Um, this takes the, the needs that we've identified f from, the, from the current uh, and future needs assessment and where we take those, those needs and we actually create transportation projects um, and we run them through a, a, a prioritization methodology um, to see which ones are the, are the most important. Those will then be fiscally constrained within a five-year action plan. Now, every, not every project is obviously going to be able to fit within that five-year action plan, but we want to take the most important ones um, and, and constrain those with funds that we think would be available within that five-year period. The rest of the projects would be um, tiered into mid- and long-range um, projects. It's important. We really want to be able to, to also leverage regional resources and regional um, um, infrastructure. So th things like that would be state routes um, and partnerships with uh, regional agencies like the Georgia Department of Transportation and ARC. Um, we want to prioritize those types of projects and, um, and, um, and be able to, to put the county in a position to compete for, fu for funds to, to do projects on those types of roadways um, at a regional and state level. Unique to this plan is a transit feasibility study. Um, this transit feasibility study is going to be a separate document to the um, typical uh, comprehensive transportation plan update. And it has a number of, of detailed analyses in here to help um, uh, assess what those transit needs are. There is um, going to be a latent demand analysis. And part of that, the latent demand analysis um, is going to be looking at um, Ridership, potential ridership in the county, uh, above and beyond what the current Henry County Transit um, Department is already providing. That latent demand analysis is going to be um, done with a statistically valid phone survey. This phone survey is um, uh, under development right now, um, as well as a, um, uh, a, a transit visioning workshop. This workshop already took place. Um, we, we did it in, in conjunction with uh, District 5 town hall meeting with Commissioner Holmes um, and we got some really great input um, from the community at, at, this, uh, at this meeting to help really develop the vision for what transit should be in, uh, in Henry County. Um, in addition, we want, we're going to be looking at a potential pilot project, a, fixed, a potential fixed route um, project if that's what makes sense per the analysis um, that could be implemented to provide public trips uh, within Henry County. This is the plan um, timeline here. And what's really important to note is that during every step of the process, every phase, whether it was the existing conditions, the needs assessment, and then going into the recommendation, we've had a parallel public involvement timeline um, with, with public meetings, stakeholder and technical advisory committee meetings. We've had a, um, an online survey. Um, so it, it's, we've, it's very important to have this um, public input and, into the plan. And um, you can see that on the timeline here. These are the uh, CTP goals that, that we've developed. It started with the goals that were developed for the original CTP back in 2007. Um, the original CTP had five overall goals. And what we've, we've done is taken those goals and then compared them to the current transportation environment. Um, and since that time, there's been two different federal funding bills passed. There's been a statewide strategic transportation plan. There's been new... Um, uh, transportation plans at the regional level. So we wanted to make sure that the goals and objectives of, of the transportation plan for Henry County uh, made sense within that, with that environment. And given that, we, were, we actually expanded those five original goals to 10 to incorporate um, all the different um, planning factors in the transportation environment. This next um, series of slides is going to show some of the analysis that we've done. Um, you should be, um, uh, you've 
already seen this, but we wanted to, to um, bring it up again. Um, this, is a, this slide shows uh, roadway capacity needs for 2040. Um, what our analysis shows is basically all the state routes in the county at one, one point or another, um, as well as I-75 uh, and Jonesboro Road and Eagles Landing, all have congestion needs um, by the year 2040, if not today. Besides roadway capacity and, and congestion needs on existing roadways, we also wanted to make sure to look at what we call roadway connectivity. Um, this map shows what we think could be a, an arterial grid system for the county, um, a redundant network of roads that can provide um, mobility and access within the county. Something important here is that what, what we found in our, in our analysis is really um, a, a lack of north-south alternatives to I-75. Uh, and what that does is it makes I-75 a local road for the county um, and puts potentially more traffic on there than um, it, it is needed. So if you, especially in say in the west part of the county, the Flippin' Road corridor, um, that is a, a needed corridor. Um, Airline Road is another a corridor on the uh, east side of the county that can provide parallel um, movement to I-75. In addition, we're, we want to make sure that there are good east-west connections to I-75 and ways to get around downtown McDonough, because that seems like a, a choke point that, through our public outreach, many people have um, talked about again and again. One thing that we have noticed with our outreach to the cities um, and the public, as well as talking with, with each of you individually, is that there is a lot of support for um, sidewalk infrastructure. What this map shows is, is our, where our analysis um, shows that people would be most likely to walk within the county. We want to target investment in those areas um, so, the, so the infrastructure is used and it's, and it's a good investment. Um, but, it's, but it's definitely important to, to note that we've, we've got a lot of support for that through this process. Similarly, with active transportation, anything that's, that's any type of transportation that's human powered, um, we, we've been looking at, at greenway trail, a greenway trail system. Important to note here is that this is really about quality of life, health, and economic development. These are the types of, types of things that we really think can entice the younger generation to um, move and stay in Henry County. These are the types of amenities that, that we've heard again and again that pe people would like um, in, in the county. So this is uh, getting into the transit feasibility study. And so what we're doing is really taking a look at existing service. We have um, uh, two different members of the uh, transit community that, s that serve on our stakeholder committee. Um, so we've got really good input from them. We've been able to talk to um, drivers at Henry County Transit and tr try to figure out um, some issues with um, existing service. What this map is showing here is, um, is a result of our transit propensity analysis, where we took a number of different demographic inputs and looked into the areas where we think people would be most likely to use transit. And the important thing here is that there are some areas in the county that we think are, are um, uh, available and likely that people would, would use a fixed route type of transit service. Through this process, we're also going to be identifying latent demand. And these are really uh, the types of people that might be taking, um, say, Greta Express, for example. We know there's a lot of latent demand out there because the top three Greta Express routes and four out of the top six Greta Express routes all originate in Henry County. So there's already a lot of people using regional transit in the system. Uh, we also know that current Henry County transit capacity is it's at capacity. Um, there are people being turned away um, from their, their ride requests um, because there's not enough capacity in the current demand response system. So some of the important outcomes from the transit feasibility study. Now this is going to be uh, a separate document to the, to the uh, CTP. It's, we're doing it in conjunction, but it will be a separate, separate document. But one of the outcomes is going to be a transit vision. 
what, you know, how, what is the vision for Henry County Transit? Is it going to remain a demand response system as it is, is today? Will it provide uh, connectivity within the county to destinations within the, in the county? Or will it um, uh, connect to destinations within the region, employment destinations like the airport or downtown or midtown? Um, that's really where, where we need to, where we're starting. We're also going to be making short-term improvements. For example, some of the things that we've seen with uh, current Henry County Transit um, service is that people take transit to, to shop, um, although they, they can only have two bags uh, on a bus because they need to make sure that other people can ride the bus, but that um, sometimes <coughs> limits the amount of, of shopping that they can do with their, with their trip. Um, and probably the most important thing at this point is that we're really going to be looking at different funding scenarios, looking at, um, at different funding options for Henry County Transit. What we've seen is with the passage of two different federal funding bills is that transit um, operating funds from federal transit operating funds um, have, been, um, have been drying up at the county. It's a combination of an interpretation of the law at the state level with um, an expanding urban county or the expanded urban, urban area within Henry County. So the rural transit funds have been um, have not been available and then the because of the way the law was interpreted the urban transit funds um, have, were not um, available to take up that place. The good news is with the passage of the FAST Act which is um, fixing America's surface transportation um, the rule specifically states that uh, that urban operating funds will be able to um, will be available for demand response services like Henry County Transit. So um, those funds are not necessarily going to be available within this current budget cycle, but we're hoping that by fiscal year um, 2018 those those would be um, available. Um, and. Another important outcome is the um, potential pilot project. Um, with the current an analysis that we're seeing, um, there is demand in the core of the county, probably somewhere between McDonough and Stockbridge. There's um, a, a lot of connections within there. You've got the hospital on Eagles Landing. You've got shopping um, around. And so that will likely be some, where some sort of pilot route would be um, uh, recommended. So next steps, we're going to be prioritizing the needs, like, like I said. Um, we're going to be creating a, um, an action plan and, um, and, and providing project and policy recommendations. And importantly, um, the final public meeting um, to get input on um, all of these projects that we're going to be recommending is going to be held on March 24th at 530. Um, so uh, we'd appreciate your help getting the word out for that. Mr. Chairman, what we're going to do is to take all the feedback that we got from the commissioners in our meetings with the various districts, with the cities, and with the public, and we're going to have a draft recommendation um, documents to you uh, by April. And so this is where we are today with the Comprehensive Transportation Plan update, and we'd like to get any feedback that we can today from you if you think that's appropriate. Anybody got any questions or comments? See you none. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Next, we have a library update, July, December 2015. 2015. Uh, Ms. Fuller, good morning. I have a, I have a paper. Just a little bit, please. What we can hear. Just Say again. The sound, we can't hardly hear that. Will somebody turn my voice up? Or somebody give me a. Uh, turn this one up, too. Could you hear it? They said it's as high as it will go. Good morning, Chair, Commissioners, and staff. Thank you so much for allowing me to come and talk about the library. Um, I just wanted to tell you what we've been doing since the 1st of July, the beginning of this fiscal year. Um, on the handout that you have on the sheet past the cover sheet, just some quick facts of, of our activity. Um, we have fielded 245,952 reference information questions uh, over the phone and electronically. Uh, we have had um, 
374,704 visits to the library, which is much more than the population, so that shows you that we've got a lot of repeat customers. On the third page, um, we have had 31,475 wireless sessions, and that means people bringing their laptops to the library, logging on to the wireless. If you drive by the library when it's closed, you'll see people in the parking lot, and they're sitting there with their laptops on the library wireless doing their work. Uh, we have downloadable magazines, and we've had uh, about 1,700 of those checked out. Our e-books have gone through the roof. We've had 14,208 individual titles checked out, and we've had 15,000 downloadable audiobooks because there are people who, who drive back and forth to Atlanta and they want to listen to books so they can download those. Um, we have 193 public access computers, and on those 193 access computers, We've had 33,291 people who've been logging on and doing work, and that's about 25,000 hours, and that's just from July to December. On the next page, we'll uh, talk about library materials and programming. We've added a little over 8,000 new items to the collection, and we now have 262,132 items in the collection. And that's a little bit more than one per capita. We really should have two to three for a basic collection, but that's what we have. And right now, we, we purged our um, uh, card holders, and anybody who hadn't used a card in the last uh, year and a half, we moved out. So we have 70,240 active registered borrows, and those folks checked out 100, over 196 items. Now, I will say there's a caveat to that. We have a lot of people who are going to other counties to check out books when we're not open. Uh, they check them out there, they bring them back to us, and we have to ship them back. So we're constantly shipping on a daily basis anywhere from 25 to 150 books back to Clayton County, Rockdale County, Newton County, uh, Flint River. So uh, those co don't count on our circulation. Um, we've had almost 4,000 children, teens, and adults that registered for our summer vacation reading program. And we had over 6,700 oh, 6, that attended programs. Um, so far this year, we have presented 737 educational programs and we've had 13,000 people who've participated in those programs. Um, in many of those programs, we have been at capacity for the room that they were in. Um, some of these, pro uh, these programs include literacy activities for preschoolers. They include English as a second language. Um, they include uh, compute, teaching, how, uh, teaching people how to use computers, uh, laptops, uh, iPads, Android, tablets, all of those things. Um, another thing that we have done over the past few years is proctor tests for those students who are taking online classes. And so far, we've proctored 42 since July 1st. Overall, since 2010, we have proctored 850 tests. And these are tests anywhere from one hour to four hours. And there's a limited number of us who are, who are eligible to proctor those. You must have a master's degree in library science in order to proctor those. So, um, and when you proctor a test, you must stay in the room all the time. So I have spent, um, I have proctored as many as seven people at one time. Now, basically, they sit there and do their tests. Um, and there are limited things that I can do while I'm doing that, as well as the other three uh, library um, master's degree people. Um, it's a good time for, do, for us to do professional reading and some of those things. Um, we have something really special that we do in this county. Once a month, we, have, we host um, something called Coder Dojo. And this is where children from 7 to 17 come in, and they learn to um, program on the computer. 
Uh, we have some community uh, volunteers who come in, but we're the only public library in the state of Georgia who offers this program. And these children are building things like robots that do things. Um, they are writing music. They're doing computer animation. Um, if they were paying for these classes, they would be paying hundreds of dollars, and these students are getting this for free. Um, and it is, uh, we have any, sometimes we have as high as 85 children in there um, in three different groups. We divide them in elementary, middle school, and high school. And um, it's usually the third Sunday on the, in the month at McDonough. And if you ever have a chance to come and see that, it is amazing what these children, seven and eight and nine year olds can do with computers. Um, I, I, I can't even imagine what they're doing, but they, they get in there and you would think having 85 children in the library at one time would just be pure chaos. They get in there and they get busy on those computers and you don't hear a sound out of them for two and a half, three hours. And that's in the, on Sunday afternoon, that's in the midst of us having, uh, the last Sunday I worked, we had uh, 475 people in the library. And they were there for anywhere from an hour to three hours. So it was uh, roller skate time for the staff and herding people around for everybody else. Um, a number of, of grants, we've been able to get a number of grants this year, and that's your final page. Uh, we got 100, uh, 10,000 50-50 matching grants from the Georgia Public Library Service to replace the McDonough front doors. Um, these doors were, have always been problematic, but they got so in the last few years, they were, they were not opening for one person and the, that person walks up to the door to open them by manually and somebody else pushes the button and it does work and it was, they were smacking them in the face. And so we were able to get $10,000 from the state and um, we scraped up the other $10,000 um, and we were able to replace those doors, which means that it, walking into the McDonough Library is no longer um, an ordeal. They walk up to the door and they can just walk in and if they've got strollers and a bunch of kids and a bunch of books, they don't have to struggle to get a button that works. <clears throat> uh, we also received $20,000 from Georgia Public Library Services to support the STEM program, uh, school program. We bought, we were able to update our science, technology, engineering, and math books to current um, books. Uh, we were able to get rid of some of the books that were saying someday we will when that was 20 years ago. Um, we also uh, received $1,000 from Central Georgia EMC to support the Library Goes to Camp for the summer program. Um, and um, I'm sure most of you remember that during the summer, once a week, um, a box of books is taken to each uh, Henry County Parks and Recreation Camp. Um, and the children get to keep that box of books for a week. And then the next week, they are brought a new box of books and that box is sent to somebody else. And this encourages them to read over the summer so that they don't experience what we call summer slide. And that means that <clears throat> They don't lose skills during the summer if they read books. And these books are fiction books and science books and riddles and cartoons, anything to keep them reading over the summer. We also received a $10,000 grant from the William R. and Sarah Bibb Smith uh, Foundation to replace some of the classic books that for the children. Some of these books like Little House on the Prairie and uh, The Chronicles of Narnia and um, some of those uh, books were just, they had more tape on them than they had pages. And so we were able to replace these with brand new books so that um, some of those books that we were checking out, I was just ashamed to see anybody have. And so we were able to replace uh, a lot of those books. Uh, we also have received a $912 grant from Georgia Humanities to provide a summer reading program for middle school students uh, for this coming summer. Um, 
We also received another $10,000 grant to add the A and make the STEAM project a STEM, uh, a, a, replay, make the STEAM project a, anyway, we added the arts, I'm sorry. <laughs> All these acronyms, you know, we had the science, technology, engineering, and math, and then the other $10,000, we were able to add art. And we added things like uh, 3D pens and Minecraft things that go with our Coder Dojo and some, some things that get the children uh, interested in adding. Um, we also got another $16,000 um, grant, and these are all competitive grants. Um, to, uh, to purchase some more large print books, some travel books. We had some books on travel for countries that no longer exist. So uh, we add that and we also increased our audio books. <clears throat> and we received also some assistive technology. Um, we have a, a text to voice reader for uh, people who, are, who have limited sight we have some handheld magnifiers that are lighted so that somebody can, you know, read prescriptions or read the fine print. Um, we have a text to computer magnifiers so that um, you could take this document and place it underneath a, a, a camera and it would, it would make the letters this high. Um, and we also received five high contrast uh, keyboards for limited sight to put in on our public computers. Um, in addition to those things, a couple of other things that we did, we have hosted several statewide meetings. Um, Galileo, which includes uh, academic, private, public, all kinds of libraries in the state of Georgia meet at the McDonough Library every other month. Um, and they're the ones who guide the Galileo, Georgia Library uh, Learning Online um, resource that is provided for all Georgians. Um, <clears throat> I have also served on a committee to choose the new state library director. Um, and I have served on a committee to choose the new head of the Galileo um, uh, program. Um, so despite the fact that we have limited hours and we have uh, limited staff, we have been able to do many, many things. Um, I would love to see us be able to increase all of these figures. And another figure I think that it's not in here, but I think you need to hear this. For every dollar that is put into local money that is put into the library system, the citizens receive anywhere from four to eight dollars of value. Um, of course, if somebody uses the library more, they're going to receive more value, but it averages out to around five fifty or six dollars um, for per for, for every dollar that you put in. So I think so far we've had a successful year. Um, and I, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Anybody have any questions or comments? Thank you very much. <laughs> Citizens are allowed to voice county-related concerns, opinions, et cetera, that are not listed on the agenda during this portion of the meeting. All persons wish to speak for our public comments must sign in with the county clerk prior to the beginning of the meeting. You must complete the public comment speaker form or you will not be recognized. You will be able to address the board for five minutes. We have uh, one that made a request to speak on non-related uh, agenda items, Mr. Steve Richardson. Uh, if you would approach, state your name for the record, please, and you have five minutes. Steve Richardson, 207 Wind Drive. Before I get started, a couple of things. One, it came to my attention over the weekend that the reason these men and women in uniform can't get a pay scale is because the commissioners are afraid that the DOT and everybody else will be upset and they'll have to give them raises as well. Well, if, if it's in fact true that these people in the other departments aren't getting paid and we're holding up the police and fire because we don't want to pay everybody else, that we need to sit down and have a conversation and get everybody paid accordingly. Because it's not right that these men and women are not, are not getting anywhere near what the surrounding counties are paying and we're losing them left and right. So that needs to be addressed. <clears throat> Number two, 
before I get started, I, I want to tell everybody why I've come up here and started doing this. It's been on my heart and my mind for a long time, and I think it's time everybody knew. <clears throat> Commissioner Smith was, was, was a pal or a buddy or whatever before he ran. I run around with his signs, his magnetic signs of my dually truck and, and sang his praises and contribu contributed some money to his campaign. $2,500 to be exact and two checks. Well, those checks after he got into office were written back to me. And right after he wrote those checks back, he stopped payment on those checks. And then he comes up here and he talks about me behind my back after I leave, you know, like a little coward, to be honest with you. So I'm here manning up. If you got something to say, you need to man up and say it and put your big girl panties on, okay? Because I'm not going to run from you. What you've done to me, and you know what you've done, you can sit there and smile all you want. But what you've done to me in this county is not right. So with that said, good morning, commissioners. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you this morning. Last month, I laid out a detailed trail of corruption and dishonesty by Chairman Tommy Smith and his daughter, probate judge Kelly Powell, Smith Powell. Every example of deceit and dirty dealing I gave you was true, and I provided you irrefutable documentation to back up everything I said. During my remarks, none of you spoke, nor did you ask any questions. However, at the end of your meeting, and once I had left the building, Chairman Smith spoke up and said, uh, asked people to investigate me, the messenger, and to ignore what I was saying about him. He went on to further say that everybody knows him, that if anybody, if should somebody want to attack him, he would be happy to provide them pointers. To wait until I left the meeting before addressing me was classic Tommy Smith. He doesn't say anything to your face. He's a coward. His work, he, he does his dirty work in the shadows behind your back. Either that or he gives his group of misfits led by intellectual giant Bill Tony or accused murderer Jennifer Rosenbaum to do his dirty work for him. Well, I came back this morning to say you're welcome to investigate me, the messenger, but more importantly, to pay attention to my message. I am placing on overhead side by side Tommy's lawsuit filing and his quote to the newspaper. One of these statements he made was under oath in the closed confines of the, of the judicial system. The other he made to the newspaper. One of his familiar tactics for spreading lies and misinformation, and so he broadcast something completely different to the citizens of the county. Clearly, one of these statements is a lie because they are completely opposite. I guess I'd like to ask the Chairman Smith to tell us once and for all which of the statements is true and which is a lie. Didn't think so. You see, that is your message, Chairman Smith. Those are your words and your message, not mine. It's got nothing to do with me, the messenger. To have been around so long, you sure are an unsophisticated amateur. Well, Chairman Smith, I don't see any pointers from you. I'm doing just fine in informing people about your lies and dirty dealings. And I plan to continue until you slink out the back door for the last time. Why? Because the people of Henry County made a terrible mistake over three years ago by punishing B.J. Mathis and giving you a chance to set Henry County back 25 years which was your goal. But the people didn't know you well enough to know what a disaster you would be or how completely incompetent you were to hold the public office. I care about this county and I don't ever want it to be duped again and be held back by petty, short-sighted bully. Henry County has learned a valuable lesson and should never let you or any member of your family earn another taxpayer dollar or damage the county's reputation or future. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have a request uh, from Mr. Bill Tony to address the board for 15 minutes. State your name for the record, please. Bill Tony, 1652, uh, Highway 155 North, McDonough, Georgia. Uh, got a little problem with uh, Mr. Preston. Uh, Mr. Preston, you stated to Monroe Roark in a newspaper article that uh, everybody that had accused you of anything or anybody that said anything about you had, you said everyone has apologized. The primary person, there was two people in that article. Um, the one that's related to you apologized to me. You said everyone. Barbara Torbett, I talked to her last I, night. I, I don't recall saying everyone. I mean, it was a pretty lengthy conversation, but I'll apologize if I said everyone. I don't recall saying everyone, but 
I think you're getting into a semantics issue. Okay. I basically challenged you too, and I and I, you know, I, I think that when you put it in a newspaper, it's just like uh, it's all true, and that wasn't true. But anyway, we'll, we'll move on to the golf course. And by the way, Miss Torbett, I'm very upset with you. We have a dialogue here, so the clock stopped. This right here was in the other newspaper. <clears throat> it's backwards. Pardon me? It, it, on my scope, it's backwards. You need to turn it towards Atlanta and Birmingham. Yes, sir. They're calling it a money pit. I call it a money pit. Uh, there's so many discrepancies in, in the management of this course and so much money loss, fuzzy math going on. They're saying we're not going to lose. We're only going to lose this much. Um, based on projections, I don't get where y'all get the projections at at all. Um, every time I turn over a stone, we find something under there. Uh, y'all are familiar with the Green Valley Golf Group. All right. That happens to be Swinnaker's. Okay, <clears throat> we're paying these people to manage the course. I pull this up on the internet, <clears throat> excuse me, and it says that, that for $199, you can play all four courses, including cotton fields. Are we getting paid for this? They're getting $200 a membership. Are we getting paid for this? Does anybody know? Are we getting a check from these folks? I would say no at the moment, but there's a mechanism to where we will get compensated. Okay. So what we basically got is I think it's an important issue, and I think it's you deserve it as a citizen to know the answer to that. County manager, can you, because I, I believe there was some misunderstanding, but that's been corrected at this point, correct? Because I want to make sure we're not hurting somebody's name in the community and, and when they're not here to defend themselves. We're, we're accounting for those rounds at this point, correct? Yes, sir. Commissioners, I, I believe I've kept you all updated. I did meet with the Swinningers um, a, a couple of weeks back when the promotional dollars, and that's what I'm calling the additional rounds that mm -hmm. were a part of this, came in, and we didn't understand how it got there. The Swinningers provided me these promotional pieces that advertised this arrangement before the contract changed, whereby Cottonwood, or Cotton Fields actually changed their relationship. So our contract with them back in July, and it changed. So their promotional documents they gave me showed that this type of promotional uh, was being advertised before we changed their agreement with them in July. We asked that question and they came up with a point of sale type of analysis that showed there's been about 1,700 thereabout rounds of golf and they have offset uh, some of the other expenditures. And right now the proposal is that they uh, reimburse us at a rate of $20 per round. So it works out to be about $30,000 in the adjustment that had to be made up. That's where we're at today. now. What's left to be done is, is the $20 per round for the promotional fee a reasonable cost? Uh, that's just what we're working off now. It does change the picture, uh, the outlook for the end of the year. But in all, in all fairness, I think it's important to say that we did adjust that part. The board will have to help me and decide what the rate should be, $20, $21, whatever it would be for those promotional rounds. The interesting part, we had no idea when I asked the questions that it was that many number of rounds. So a point of sale type of analysis was done by the Swinningers. We have to go back and make sure it meets our test on it. But right now, 
uh, we are going to continue on with that promotion and we will allocate and make a different track for the promotional rounds versus the home rounds is what I call them. So we've, we have adjusted that part. Uh, it should reflect in the next financial statements that you get. The date on this is 2-19-16, but I just pulled this off their, off their uh, website. Yes, sir. So it's, it's – and uh, in, in, I don't doubt anything about that. It just occurred before the July meeting when the county changed the arrangements for the financing we were doing. The promotional was in place before that when the Swinningers had a whole different operational uh, component to it. So what I was looking for, was this something new? And if it was new, then I agree. But it wasn't. It was something that was done when they were operating it more as a proprietorship as opposed to a contract management arrangement with the county. And we made that change, saved us three million bucks in financing, but it was obvious to me that that was in place when they were operating under a different agreement. They're willing to pull it out. They're willing to discount it. It appeared to me that the promotional rounds that were 1,700 some rounds this time, I thought it was a better financial position to let the promotional rounds continue because it did add something, even though it added Alabama E discounted rate, the promotional dollars were significant to us. This honor system is not working out very well, is it? We've had our bumps. Um, we're <laughs> working on it. Okay. Let me, let me go a step further. <clears throat> okay. Just to pay the management, just to pay the Swinnikers, You've got to do 566 rounds of golf just to pay those people. Now, you take that and put it on top of this, it's, it's, it's amazing how, the, how this thing, we're, we're losing more money of our, <coughs> excuse me, than we can shake a stick at. Again, this one right here, <coughs> excuse me, we're losing money left and right. <coughs> but uh, Fred, Fred's getting creative, um, uh, finance, he's getting very creative with, with the numbers and his projections. I've looked at them, I've, I've shown them to other people that are running golf courses and they say these, these numbers are not, not good numbers at all. What I'd like to do, being that we're talking about the golf course, is to show you who is responsible for us having the golf course. These people right here, if you... Uh, Run into them on the street, thank them very much for getting us in the mess we're in today with that golf course. I'm sure they'll talk to you. While we're at it, Nash Farm. And Terra Field. These are the main ones. This, I don't have time to go over all of them. In fact, all the properties, if you want to say a special thanks to all these people, now, Mr. Preston, you brought up not a person on this board was responsible for those properties. This right here should clarify. Okay? But we elected you guys to take care of the problem. All right? Let's do something with these properties. We need to close that golf course, put that thing to, to rest, turn it back to property, 
sell off half of it. And I keep telling you all this, and it falls on deaf ears. All right. <clears throat> Please sell it. Okay, now I would like to bring this up. Mr. Barham, me and you have been around and around about a water park. Everybody in the county knows about that water park. And um, I take my hat off to Mr. Holmes. He's working hard to put everything he can in his district, and he's doing a great job of it. Now, this water park, y'all have just taken $2 million from a police precinct and give it to him. Now, when, I, when we were talking about the, the money for, the, for the putting the park in, you were, you were saying very, very minimal. You had everybody at the county saying it was a minimal thing. Well, it just so happened you just got bumped two million bucks. So, but we end up losing a precinct, a police precinct that we need desperately because of your decision. In fact, it went unanimous. I'm ashamed of all of you for that one. We needed the police precinct. We need it bad. And y'all, I feel like you let me down. Mr. Barham, I don't know if you read all this stuff that comes before you, but i tell you what, you need to. Because this stuff, surely you're not letting all this slide get by you. Again, I say, If you like what's going on, if the public likes what's going on, call these gentlemen. There's their phone number. Thank them. If you disagree with them, call and tell them what you disagree with. Now, that's y'all got elected to do things to, to protect the people. I don't think you're doing a very good job of it. Sir. Sir, please. Not still have two million dollars for a precinct can you build it with two million dollars are you saying we can't are you saying we can i think we can all right i guess we'll have to <laughs> why why do we have four million dollars for it to start with then i'm curious i don't know that i can't answer you so no. i'm not in construction i do golf cars you do flooring you're I more mean, into construction than i am I maybe you know something i don't know <laughs> I'll tell you what, one thing about it, Mr. Moss, if people like what you're doing, you'll get their vote. If they don't like what you're doing, you might not get their vote. I got one more. Thank you me. very much. One more. Have you got that, where you put that up there about how much we lost from December to, from July to December? That's your figures. Yes, sir. The loss, I, I didn't catch the numbers. Should have stopped me a while back. I got so much paper here. Those are your figures. I believe about three or four months of that golf course was closed for renovation. Is that correct? Sir? During that period, wasn't it three or four months that it was shut down for renovation of the greens and stuff? Are you telling me it's going to be profitable? <laughs> I'm just making a statement. I'm asking you. I'm telling you, the people that it was closed three I'm or four months. I'm asking you, do you think that golf course is going to be profitable? We're going to make money on that golf course. I, I can't say for sure. No, sir. Because i got a bunch of people that own golf courses say it's impossible. Now, again, I'm not in the golf course business. I'm in the golf cart business. Yes, sir. So, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make a comment since we already got it open up for a dialogue. The background of the uh, golf course <clears throat> goes back to the members that you just mentioned. Uh, in the beginning, uh, I was executive assistant here, so I wasn't involved in all this, but I know exactly how it come down. The uh, county paid $22.2 million for the golf course. Okay, the way they split it up and splash three 
there was $10 million set aside in uh, acquisition of real estate in Splash 3 that was going to be used for the Board of Commissioners uh, portion of the golf course. The Board of Commissioners was going to end up with basically 60 some odd acres. And the purpose of acquiring that by record was obviously if the Henry County is going to go with more especially the jail pod, uh, it has no place to grow, so now it can go out to the east. Now, the Henry County Development Authority was involved uh, in this as well. They was going to get half of it, uh, over half, which was about 70 acres, which was the most easterly part. And the intent was they was going to be held accountable for $12.2 million. Okay, Henry County had paid their portion. Henry County Board of Commissioners paid their portion, the $10 million, basically up front. So the deal was the Henry County Development Authority was going to take that uh, other half and market it, and they even had a conceptual plan, and they was going to call it the uh, Shops of Cottonfield. So they was going to market that, and the intent was just to make enough money off of that to pay for the whole $22.2 uh, million. Well, uh, that was in seven and eight, so when the economy hit in 10, uh, the Development Authority, which has no money, they had uh, floated the 12.2, so at the end, it, they, somebody had to amortize it, okay? The Development Authority has no funds to do such as that, so based on the contract that the BOC entered in with the Development Authority, the BOC became responsible for the debt, okay? At that time, Henry County had no money, and they, they could borrow uh, $12.2 million, but they couldn't pay the principal and the interest. So starting in 10, you go 20, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16, Henry County uh, Board of Commissioners is paying $464,000 a year interest only for $12.2 million. Okay, now starting next year, that the principal and interest will be somewhere about 1.2 million. And initially, that loan would have been paid off in 2032, okay? Because of that, in the last, uh, last year, because of the economy, uh, refinancing was good, so Henry County Board of Commissioners refinanced the bonds, and now I think they'll be paid off in 21 or 22 instead of 32. So that's uh, what we're doing, we're compressing it. And uh, that will save uh, the taxpayer, uh, I'm gonna tell you this, you can't say the golf course in profit and savings in the same sentence. It, it just don't happen. So I'm gonna explain how we got to the 17,000. In October of 2014, the board, the uh, presentation by the county manager at the time, entered into an agreement with uh, Cottonfield to extend the original contract of 11, which expired in 2014, uh, December 31st, okay? The only thing that was done in that contract was the golf course would pay the county $2,000 a month rent, and they would keep everything. And in the agreement, they were supposed to provide, obviously, the maintenance for the uh, course, and they're supposed to provide maintenance for the buildings, and et cetera. So the county manager at the time presented to the board and indicated to us that we're going to merely amend that agreement, which requires no signature from the chairman, amend that agreement and go from $2,000 a month to $2,600 a month. But yet we're going to do, uh, the manager said we're going, to do, we're going to be obligated to do some work, which is going to be not to exceed about $40,000. Well, the... If, if you take 2,600, that's about 30, 31,200 a year, and we're going to we're going to do some improvements over there for 40,000. So that's a loser in its own. But anyway, when we refinance the bonds, uh, I'm going to say April, May, June, sometime in that neighborhood, then we found out that uh, the, the nature of the tax-free bonds, the public couldn't take these bonds and make them tax-free if a certain portion of it was to a private sector. Now this is where it gets convoluted and, and it gets real sticky. Henry County has, and I'm gonna to allude to the gentleman that accused me 
of being a chairman and a CEO of a corporation. I, I just found out back in uh, several months ago, the gentleman is 100% correct. I, at that time, unbeknown to me, I was a CEO of the Henry County uh, Office Industrial Park Corporation, which has its own bylaws. And the reason that corporation was created, it was created back in 07 to where Henry County Board of Commissioners could have a mechanism to do what they did with the airport. I mean, not the airport, but the, uh, the golf course. Okay, in order to keep from being extremely fined heavily for violating the IRS, then council had to redo the contract. And I'm just going to hit the high marks because it, it, it kind of gets confusing somewhat, it does unless you write it down. But anyway, the, the whole scenario changed. There, there was a new contract. Okay, and this new contract, uh, as you know, the golf course takes in all the proceeds. They take in everything. At the end of the month, uh, they also take care of all the expenditures. But for this service to, to meet IRS regulation, they pay themselves $17,000 a month. Where they was paying us $2,600 now, uh, they, we, the system pays them $17,000 a month. Okay, as you know, since this interception, there's never been a profit. There will never ever be a profit in this because you can't say profit and the golf course in the same. You can't say savings in the same. And, and, and reason being, you have to put that $464,000 in the pot in the beginning of every year. Until next year, then it goes up to $1.2 million. But anyway, we, we are trying to go through, uh, we're trying to work this out. Uh, it, it is a money pit, really. And, and it's, uh, it, if you really want to understand it, it, it's come up here and council or the county manager, I, I myself, I can lay all this out and explain it and it, there's no good thing to it. But having said that, I yield the floor and everybody wants to make a comment. Chairman, I'd like to make a comment. It comes down to the bottom line. We pay $22 million for this golf course. We own it. We've had it appraised. We paid $10 million to begin with. We owe $12.5 million. It's been valued at $2.5 million. If we was to sell the golf course for the appraised value, the county would still be on the hook for $9.5 million. It doesn't matter. That, don't, that debt don't go away. Now, if somebody was willing to come in here and pay us so the county could break even, I'd be all on board with But I'm not going to sit here and be on board with something that the county taxpayers are going to take a $9.5 million loss on, plus the other $10 million we already spent. Now, it may not happen in my lifetime, but somewhere down the road, we're going to get our money back in that golf course. That's all i got to say. Anybody else like to make a comment? Okay, so moved. Thank you. Next, uh, we'd, we have a request from the uh, Pastor Ralph Easterwood. If you'll come up, state your name, and you have 15 minutes, sir. Start my time yet now. If that clock up there runs, runs right, I'll do my best. I'm used to preaching about 45 minutes, so. But uh, but don't I'm, don't start me. Go back to 15. Now. I'm not started yet. You get, go ahead and give me 15. Well, I'm, I'm all right. If I go over, I'll take a love offering up, and I'll take all y'all to lunch. Okay. So so go back and give me 15 minutes. Now I'm gonna need ever been a. I'm gonna start my stopwatch here. All right. I'm here to represent the uh, public servants of Henry County, the police officers, and the firemen. Mr. Chairman, commissioners, staff, and county manager, and also Ms. Stephanie Braun that let me come. And if I, I left somebody else out, all the you other important folks over here, I want everybody to be respected today. I'm 80 years old. I know you don't believe it. I'll show you my, my uh, birth certificate. I got my first wife over here, Miss Gwen, had her 62 years, and uh, we have five children, 12 grandchildren, nine greats. I've been 50 years in the ministry at Glen Haven. Uh, we have about, it's a church that makes a difference, and I'm here to try to make a difference, and I appreciate 
uh, police and firemen that are here today, along with a lot of my church members over here. I've been a uh, chaplain for 10 and a half years, also Pastor Stan, a senior pastor is. I've had 341 ro rides with our officers, supervisors, and command staff, and I've spent over 1,400 hours in police cars. I believe I am qualified to know how our police department feels and what's going on with them. I retired 2010. I still have a Bible class at Glen Haven with over 400 in it. We have an active membership of over 1,800, and Pastor Stan and I will be doing everything we can to impress and influence our people to go along with giving our police officers and our firemen much needed raises. I originally lived in Decatur. I moved to Stockbridge in the 50s, went back to Decatur till 89, come back to Stockbridge, and then to McDonald's. So I have 32 years in Henry County. Now, as I start this, the, the facts say that you just remember over 20% of what we say, and then you forget that if you don't really work at it. So I hope and pray that I do have your attention, and I believe that you will remember. I respect you for the great jobs that you do, for the hours you put into this, and for leading our county, and I just ask for your respect as I tell you how I feel about this problem. Uh, our church has been in Henry County since 2002. We, it represents about 812 families now, and we've been involved in public service ministries very much. I'm just saying this not to brag, but what I'm telling you is that we're putting our money in our church where our mouth is. Uh, we have, most of the time, we, we have had for years, we've had public service breakfasts, we've had public service special days, uh, we raised about 40000 for body armor, uh, SWAT teams, shields, lights, helmets, 12000 we've out road with the officers. When we ride with them, we furnish them with a special officer's Bible with a book that helps them with their marriages, or devotion books. We give them a gift certificate to go out to Longhorn, and we've done that to every officer we've ever rode with. We've had other miscellaneous things we've done, and it added up over the period of time we've been here, 13 years, to about $120,000 that we've had involved in working with our police department. We also raised 32000 for the voice amplifiers for our fire department. Uh, also, we have a benevolence fund that has proved to be very important. And I raised 5000 in it about 2012. I was the celebrity chef in one of the magazines, and I can't cook a lick. And, uh, but I used my wife's taco uh, a recipe, and we started out a benevolence fund for $5,000. Since then, we've had other officers to help us with fishing tournaments, with motorcycle rides, with private donations from churches and businesses. And in four years, we have helped 52 different officers to a, to a tune of $17,630. I have a little, uh, two or three letters I'd like to share with you because this is very important. One of our officers says, on two occasions, I received a check written out to my name. When I received this check, it lifted a huge weight, huge weight off of my shoulders. Knowing that I had to pay bills with them, I'd be able to keep my, my power on as well as food in my family's mouths. One of the check happened to come around Christmas and help me give my daughter Christmas. She dreams of it all year. This help that you gave came at a time, and it was a blessing. In September, one of them says, I had cancer, a great blow in my life. My husband and I are both in law enforcement and have seven children. We have me medical expenses. We do not make enough money to pay back uh, from my savings, if I'm, uh, uh, to have any savings in our paycheck. Uh, we're facing a financial crisis. I was recently presented a $500 check from the Police Benevolence Association. That was such a blessing. I don't know what we would have done without that blessing. Another officer says, I received 500 from the Chaplain's Association. I have a Barrett's esophagus with a peak cancerous throat condition. I've had three biopsies done in different portions of my throat and esophagus and would, would, be, and would be put to sleep for the procedure. I was alarmed to find out that a week before my surgery, I had to pay $500 for the procedure. I cried. I couldn't afford it. And actually, I, I was going to call to cancel the surgery. I would have had 
had to work several part-time jobs, several months to raise the money. I appreciate it. I am so grateful for the police of benevolence fund helping me. One officer says, I'm writing this statement to the commissioners to know that the Panace Benevolent Fund helped me and my family. November 2015, I was out of work for surgery over a month and a half. I could not pay my bills, not able to save to have any type of Christmas for my family without help. But he says, I come to work every day to protect this county and love it, but the salaries have to change. I feel like I am not making a difference anymore due to lack of support from the county. And so this was an officer that was able to be helped. I got two or three other letters. Time doesn't permit me to be able to read all of them. But we have, over the period of years, done everything we can to help our officers and our firemen. The problems that we have today is that the morale is low with our public servants. I know this. I've spent hours and hours with them. We had 100 officers that we are short now in the police department. Many of them have to cover two zones. Sometimes they are really spread out. If somebody needs help, they may have to wait a while for that officer that's covering two zones to be able to get over there to help them. And so that is dangerous in our county when we have officers that are having to cover two zones. Sometimes I go to roll call and we'll, have, we'll be three or four officers short in that roll call. And so we do have problems. 151 officers have left in the last five years. That's a cost of $9 million to the county. In my rides of 341, over one-third of them are gone today. And the county tells me, or the police department tells me, that a certified officer that is trained, we have about $100,000 involved in them. Also, the fire department has sent me their loss here. They have had 85, 86 over the last six years of EMTs, that's emergency medical technicians and firemen and paramedics to leave. They're all firefighters. Uh, they say that it takes uh, cost to train and equip a new firefighter, an EMT, $71,000. Once a person is certified, it's an additional almost 4,000 for a firefighter and an EMT to become certified that takes 18 months. The total cost in time to replace one of these is $75,508. They have they figured the replacement cost for those that have resigned, retired, quit is $1,996,091 over a period of five years. I'm not going to bore you with more statistics, but I do think we have a tremendous problem today. Uh, we have had 717 officers killed over the nation in the last five years. We've already had 16 that's been killed this year, and one of them in the news, a lady that was out of the military, was killed on the first night that she went out for her duties. I personally had three funerals with the Henry County Police Department, Jimmy Carter, J.J. Stubbs, and Elgin Daniel, and, we, and, and certainly those were fine officers that were do, was doing a great job. When we moved Glen Haven from Decatur in 2002, the Cab County, the area of our church was, was the worst crime district in the Cab County. We had no indebtedness. I was 67 years old. I had it made. I could have stayed there, worked out of, uh, as long as I wanted to work, and have absolutely no financial problems. But it was dangerous to be there on Austin Drive. Uh, we, had, we had tires taken off of the cars of people out in the parking lot while we was having services. We had all types of break-ins and crime going on in DeKalb County. It got worse and worse and worse. And so we come down here with 200 people starting over, and as we did, then I started seeing the same things that had happened in DeKalb County start happening in Henry County. It was the seventh fastest growing county uh, in, 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 in the nation. 
These things started happening, and as they started happening, we had catalytic converters stole, we, they vandalized our bus, they stole two trailers, uh, and even on Brush Arbor, where I live, they tried to go in on a family at, tw at 1.45 the other morning. The only thing that kept them from going in is the door was latched, and they couldn't get it open. That happened right there. We've had many things, uh, much crime that's been, been, been surrounding us in Henry County. The police teach us, and they tell us we need to fight back. But we've got officers that the, the, the salary in 2008 was 36523 Now it's the same thing, 36523 And And over in DeKalb County, they've just got a raise because they cannot survive because they're losing so many police officers going to other agencies. They say we must keep public safety first. We are under police. We have to look out for the needs versus our wants. This has to be our priority. How safe are we today? We have security systems. We have our doors locked. We have a little thing to prop up our doors. But the other night, as I started to leave out, and ride with an officer at three, up to 3 o'clock in the morning. I said, I don't know if I can leave or not and leave my wife by herself in this house tonight. I worried about it because them trying to have home invasions right on the street where I live. Uh, I'm tired of, of running. I'm tired of having to move. I'm tired of having to change because of the increase in crime in our county. The answer to this, we've got to keep properly trained officers and firemen, seasoned ones. We've got to. When I ride with a rookie, uh, I appreciate them being there, but it's not like riding with a seasoned officer. When you ride with a seasoned officer, they know things. They learn something every day, and our firemen are the same way. They have so many things they have to know as seasoned firemen. And when we lose them, we lose safety. When we lose them, we lose uh, a, a sense of, of calmness in our lives. And so uh, the salaries uh, of an FT officer, as he trains a recruit many times after he's been there five or six years, is the same as a recruit that he's training. Now, folks, that causes your morale to go down when you're sitting there with your family. That, that causes it. They, make a little, they start out making about $700 a week. Many times I'll, when I ride with them, I say, do you all go out and eat? And they'll say many times, we can't afford to go out and eat. So the public servants are leaving on a regular basis for more salary. I think the danger that they have out there, I think we need to call them raises combat pay. That's what I think we need to call it. Because when they walk up to a car, and they stop that car for a taillight being out, they can be killed right on the spot. When they go in for a domestic call, they never know what they're going to face. Our firemen rescue people, and they, the houses are on fire, and many times they go in and, 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 and they protect families. We're losing our protection. We're losing our safety in Henry County. Now, I do not begrudge other county people working for the county getting a raise, but I do not equate other county workers with police officers and firemen. They're putting their life on the line when they go out. And I believe, and I respect y'all, but I believe uh, it's good to have parks, it's good to have new facilities and restaurants, it's good to have this, but people, if, if, if we do not do something about this and our county becomes less and less safe, we're going to have people go. How do you know that? I saw it happen in DeKalb County. I saw what happened to our county. I saw what happened to our church. I saw what happened to our people. And they bailed out because of the lack of safety. Our first responsibility is to make our public servants more secure with salary increases. Uh, our first responsibility is take care of the people that's in Henry County. And I appreciate the time. Is my time already up? Yes, sir. Is it up? All right, let me say one other thing, and I'll shut up. All right, lend me your ear. I say this many times. I take an acrostic and make it make ear an acrostic. E A R. Everyone needs encouraging. I'll encourage you with the tremendous decisions that you have to make, and I, I appreciate your hard work. You need to be encouraged, but we also need to encourage our public servants, our firemen, and our police. Appreciate 
I appreciate you. This has been the key to my ministry all these years. I appreciate what you do. But I saw I appreciate our firemen and, and, and our police officers that go out there every day and make it a safe place to be. You can't even go up to, to a filling station now and fill up your car without somebody wanting to steal your car. Folks, you look at the news. It is filled with crime. It is filled with so much. I'm sure that, I'll, well, say R, a, I'll say R. I'll say R. Yeah, R. Let me, make let me say R. All right. Now, uh, let, 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 let me make a statement uh, before you go on. The board needs to approve to extend your time. Approve, approve what? I said before you continue, the board needs to approve to extend your time. All right, will, will they? Okay. <laughs> we have a motion? Right, thank you, thank you. Right. We have a motion, District 5. Thank you, thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. You can continue. I don't have to take up the love offer. I don't have to take up a love offering then if you give me some more time. All right. But I will take any of you out to lunch anytime you'll go with me and I'll pay, all right? E, encourage. A, appreciate. R, respect. I encourage you. I appreciate you. I respect you. But let's, let's put it back to our public servants that we encourage them. We appreciate them. Thank you for helping make my life safer. Thank you that I can, I, I can know my wife can be taken care of. I love her. I don't want to do without her. Amen. She's the boss of the house. She keeps me going. And I want to keep her just as long as I can. And I want to go before her. But she said she's going to take my alligator shoes. And I said, don't give them to know your new husband. She said, I won't because they're not his size. So, but she's going to hang with me. All right. The people in this county are going to leave and they, if, if we do not make it a safer place, I beseech you, and I know the heart of my public servants, I know the heart of them, and I tell them at roll call, I love you. God's give you, to my, put you in my heart. I love people. Without Jesus, I'd be mean as a snake. But God's given me a compassion for people. And I got a compassion for those that go out and put their life on the line for us, policemen and firemen. And gentlemen, work out something. Give them a raise if nobody else gets a raise. And let's have protection. Let's have protection. Children are being slaughtered. People are being hurt. Communities are being ravaged today. It's in the news. The news can't even get everything on it because of what's going on. Let's do something about it. I've been a pastor of a church 43 years that made a difference. And I plead by the grace of God and the mercy of God that we make a difference in our county and cause our place to be a safe place to be to raise our children. Thank you for the extended time. God bless you. The final agenda items will be considered on the consent agenda. I'm sorry. We got, I have a statement. Oh, okay. I yield the floor to District 4 for a comment. Um, I appreciate you, Preacher. I don't think I'll be as um, dynamic as you, but uh, I do appreciate you coming and putting a smile on her face. That's a, it's a nice, uh, nice change. And for everybody out there, uh, Glen Haven is in my district, and I do represent them, and I have a small statement that I'd like to uh, read, if I may. That's okay with the board. Like what now? Is that okay with the board? To do what? To read a statement. Oh yeah. Okay. I don't have a problem. Anybody object to reading a statement? I don't. Over the past year, Henry County has seen an alarming increase in violent crimes. We have had a 150 percent increase in homicides. I'm going to repeat that for everybody. We have had a 150% increase in homicides with 10 homicides last year. We had a 21% increase in rapes at 46. We had a 39% increase in robberies last year with 139 incidents. This includes Kellytown. Henry County, we are at war and we are losing. 
I feel that I am unable to provide the level of service that you as citizens deserve. This issue is across the board with the police department, fire department, and the sheriff's office. I'll speak about the fire department and sheriff's office at another time. Today I would like to focus on the police department. Over the last five years, we have averaged losing around 30 officers a year. This comes out to around $9 million of loss of tax revenue with our officers leaving. Basically, we are losing officers as fast as we can hire them. I have spent the last several months working with Henry County Police Department to pinpoint the issue and trying to come up with a viable solution. What we are seeing is we are losing the majority of our officers from between two to three years of service. This is a function of pay, but it's also a function of not having any avenue for advancement or room for career development. It has become very clear that continuing to do the same thing and expecting a different result is unrealistic. To combat this, the police department and I are pro proposing a change in career advancement and rank structure as it pertains to patrol officers in the uniform patrol division. To uniform patrol division is your officers you see in your police cars. How this proposal will work is this. An officer would be hired at the current pay rate. This officer would be classified as a PO1, a police officer one. After two or three years of service, they would be eligible to be promoted to a PO2, that is a police officer two, also known as a master patrolman. This is not something that will just be handed out. The officer would need to complete advanced training and have a spotless record. Once the officer reaches five plus years of service, this officer would be eligible to promote to a PO3, AKA a senior master patrolman. Each promotion comes with a small raise. You need to understand that the Henry County Police Department, the Henry County Fire Department, and the Sheriff's Office does not offer any kind of longevity raises or incentives. Meaning if you work diligently for Henry County for 10 years, you, you are making the exact same thing as a brand new officer or firefighter. Thus the reason we are losing our qualified officers and firefighters. This is the first issue. The second issue is how do we fund it? I have dissected this issue many different ways and have looked into in many different forms and many different angles. I wanted to bring something to the citizens that was a little more innovative than our standard avenues. What I'm looking into is taking our existing millage rate and separating out public safety. This would not be an addition to the millage rate. The overall millage rate would be reduced and put into public safety only. This would show as a separate line item on your tax bill allowing the for better citizen oversight. I like the idea of taxpayers of Henry County having a better understanding of how their tax dollars are spent. This issue is quite convoluted and cannot be explained in a few minutes on the dais. At my next quarterly town hall meeting, this will be the subject of conversation. Please feel free to contact me with your input. And gentlemen, thank you for your service. Anybody else have any comments or statements? The following agenda items shall be considered on the consent agenda before voting on the consent uh, agenda items. I will ask if anybody wants the opportunity uh, to add or delete any items. Transit. Resolution approving <coughs> submission of application for Federal Transit Administration 5310 Transportation Grant for Elderly and Disabled. Uh, resolution accepting FY 2016 Georgia Department of Human Services Coordinated Transportation Grant. Uh, have a resolution approving a lease agreement for light and services with Georgia Power Company for 40 Atlanta Street. Uh, resolution requesting authorization to open an account with uh, Georgia Fund One to invest 911 special project funds. Does anybody want to add to or delete any of these items for discussion? If not, does somebody move we approve the consent agendas that uh, is published? Move to approve. Have motion district three? Second. Second. Second district two. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. So moved. Resolution to amend the uh, fiscal year 2015-2016 budget for unfunded pension actuaries liability. Angie Sorrow, budget di uh, director. Good morning. Good morning, Chairman, board, 
Board of Commissioners, before you have a uh, resolution uh, to amend the fiscal year 1516 budget for unfunded actuarial liability payments. I am asking to move uh, $566,073 I mean, $566, out of fund balance to pay GEBCOR for the March 31st, 2016 due date of the unfunded um, liability. Anybody have any questions or comments? Not somebody move it. Uh, we accept the resolution of the Henry County Board of Commissioners amending the fiscal year 2015-16 budget for unfunded pension actuary liability payment. Move to approve. Have a motion, District Two. Second, Second District Three. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Great, thank you. Resolution authorizing budget transfer with uh, emergency management. Mr. Don Ash. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Board of Commissioners. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you. We're requesting to move some funds. Historically, our PPA monies have been allowed to be used for the function of emergency management. That has changed, which requires us to move it over to sal um, salaries, and we're asking to adjust our budget and do the budget amendments to free those money up to do the things that we would normally have done out of our PPA monies. Anybody have any comments or questions? If not, somebody move in that direction? To our motion, District 3. Second District 1, any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. So moved. All opposed, same sign. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm ready. I'm waiting on you. Are oh, you going to move into the next resolution? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, the second resolution is um, to request to move some funds from our salary savings to cover vehicles that we would have normally had purchased out of our budget. So we're just requesting to move those funds to make those transactions for vehicles for use in the department. Anybody have any comments or questions? If not, does somebody uh, move to approve that resolution? It's so published. Moved. So have moved. a motion, second two. Uh, we have a motion, district two, second district five. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. So moved. Thank, Thank you. you. Resolution approving work order, quote, for repairs of the uh, replacement of the carpet at Henry County Police. Major going. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Board of Commissioners. Um, came before you in uh, last month and requested the uh, transfer of bu budgetary funding over to capital outlay for the purpose of purchasing carpet to replace inside of the building here at, at central headquarters. The total price for that was $151,914. Uh, it was approved in resolution 1627. Since that time, we've engaged with the Henry County Purchasing Department to request a contractor to do those services. Um, it is recommended that we use state contract GA 03062911-CCE with Centennial Contractor Enterprises to do the work under state contract for the amount of $151,914.00. We're requesting to use this contractor for the funds that have already been allocated. Anybody have any comments or questions? not, we have a motion, uh, correction, a resolution before you. Does somebody move we approve it as published? Move to approve. Have a motion, District 4. Second. Second, District 2. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. So moved. Thank you, sir. Presentation annexation. Uh, and I got a note here that we're going to, uh, uh, at the appropriate time, what I'm going to do, I'm going to allow uh, the board to approve the allow 15 minutes. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to treat this just like we would a a, a rezoning issue. So once we discuss this, uh, and I'm on, since these two are contiguous, we're going to discuss uh, both of them. Is that your intent, Council? And then, then we'll do whatever we need to do. We're not going to take them. We're going to take them one at a time. But one is well, picking. It might be easier to do both at the same time, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Really okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hear the presentation. And we'll give the board uh, their uh, time to comments and once say comments and questions, then I'll open the floor for 15 minutes uh, for anybody that'd like to be heard on this matter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as Mr. Chairman, as you and the board members are aware, on February 5th, the county received notice from the city of its intent to annex two parcels. Um, a very small parcel right here at the corner on the southwest quadrant of the Interstate 75 and Jodico Road interchange. 
and a larger parcel behind it at the same intersection. And accompanying that notice was notice of an intent to rezone the property from its present zoning classification to the city's mixed use, to one of the city's mixed use rezonings. Here's Interstate 75. Here is Jodico Road. North is the direction the pencil's pointing. And yeah, let me put it on the small map first, just perspective. It's okay. this, yeah, it's this corner. The scope here. It's this corner here, which you can see better on a more zoomed in version. Again, Interstate 75, Jodico Road. The annexation encompasses this smaller parcel and this larger parcel. That clarify the location? Yes, sir. So, so the rezoning application was accompanied by a rezoning application to zone the property under the city's mixed use, one of their mixed use classifications for the purpose of a mixed use project, which would encompass residential, retail, and office uses. And the residential would include multifamily residential uses. The Georgia law provides or requires a city to notify a county when there's an, in, an intent to annex property. This annexation will take place under what we call the 100% method, which means 100% of the property owners have made an application to the city to annex the property. Georgia law gives counties an opportunity, requires a city to notify the county, and gives the county the opportunity to raise objections under certain circumstances, one of which involves land use objections. We also have, as part of the old service delivery strategies agreement with the city, we have a, a process spelled out on that agreement to the extent it's still valid to provide for an objection based on land use. This, the county doesn't really have the right to object to the annexation itself. What you have the right to object to is the, is the planned land use that the city intends to put the property to. There's a couple of unique features about this particular property which bear pointing out, first of all, the shaded area up here is the limits of the existing city of Stockbridge. It is the southernmost limits of the city of Stockbridge along Interstate 75, and they seek to annex the property over here. Now, under the 100% method of annexation, you are required to have contiguity between the property to be annexed and existing city limits. What that means is they have to touch. Now, they don't have to touch directly when they cross public property. If, in other words, you can ignore the Interstate 75 right-of-way. I believe that this parcel and this parcel are each owned by the Georgia Department of Transportation. The law allows annexation to skip over public lands. Yes, sir. Uh, to this. Can the, city, can the city still move forward and annex if, the property? If the county asserts a proper objection, there's a dispute resolution process that has to be completed before the annexation can be finished. Um, I've, prepared, I've prepared for you a resolution that would accomplish an objection, and we would then have to work through the resolution, the dispute resolution process. The, the question <clears throat> in my mind on this one is whether or not crossing over diagonally creates the minimum contiguity required. And that wouldn't be something that, that would be involved in the dispute resolution process. That would be something a court would have to determine if there's a challenge to the actual annexation. And the resolution I provided you does two things. First of all, it, it provides an objection to the land use, to the change in land use. Second of all, it authorizes me, if necessary, to file whatever action is appropriate to have a court tell us whether or not this annexation satisfies the contiguity requirement. And I have to tell you, I don't know that it does or it doesn't. Uh, this, is a, this is a unique, uh, a really unique annexation, given the amount of public land we're crossing and given that it's a diagonal crossing. I tend to think it does not satisfy the contiguity requirement. It may end up touching, but I don't see how it creates 50 feet worth of contiguity. I'm sure I could manipulate the geometry of the drawings and create it, but I'm not sure that the annexation law contemplates manipulating geometry. So your options are these three things. Your options are, number one, to do nothing, 
If the board chooses to take no action, the, the city is then free to proceed with annexation and rezoning. The rezoning would have to take place just like every other city rezoning. You can object, you can adopt the resolution that I've provided which would provide for both an objection to the land use change and an authorization for me to seek clarification as to the contiguity issue or you could do any combination of those two things. You could direct me to seek clarification on contiguity, not raise an objection to land use or vice versa. Uh, but the law does require whatever action you take, if you choose to object, today's the day you have to object because the 30 days will run on March 6th or March 7th, whatever the 30th day from February 5th when we got the notice are. So that's, that's the, the decisions the board has to make today. Uh, Dante's here can help answer questions about the project if necessary, and I'm happy to answer whatever questions I can answer. I'm going to go up there and say that um, I think this is an incredible project, and I'm 100% in support um, if it's in the county or if it's in the city. Um, to that point, I want to ask about the property just above Jodico on the, I think this is the western portion, uh, the western side of the freeway. If the city annexed that portion, would it be easier for them to end, annex the uh, portion below Jodico Road? I, I think that the city, and I don't know if you can see on the, on the maps, how, well, I, I think the boundary is there. Yeah, the boundary lines come out right. If the city were to annex this direction and annex all the parcels that got us down to here, to here, to here, or over to here, I don't, I don't know that there would be a question about contiguity. Um, and likewise, if the city were to annex down this direction, I think if, if they went far enough and the contiguity were going that direction, I don't think there, were, there would be a question. In my mind, the question is whether you cross diagonally like that, whether you, whether you scrunch it up diagonally, and if you do, whether or not the 50 feet requirement is met, because I just, I just can't tell. I think it would take some engineering work to pull out right away, squish things together, that's, and that's not something that, that we have plugged into any computer system to do it. We've, we've created some graphics that could show it either way, but it's, uh, I do think there's a, there's a legitimate question about whether or not that satisfies the contiguity as it is. Uh, I wanted to, to jump into the discussion and the fact that um, First, I think this is all a big misunderstanding to a large degree. I got an email um, from Council Member Alexander in, back in January, and he, he wrote some very positive things about this, this development. And then I also had a conversation with the, the city manager. And I think the, the city of Stockbridge's big concern was, is the county going to move forward with something that everybody is kind of in agreement upon would be a good value add quality of life type of project for the community. And um, I looked back at my emails because um, after I had my, my conversations, the, the email chain with Council Member Alexander, you know, I wrote him that it, this seemed like a, a great opportunity, but I didn't follow up with that and I didn't share with him how my conversation had gone with my zoning advisory board member and others that we, we I think that I, I concur with my fellow commissioner, Mr. Holmes, in the fact that we we see this as a, a, a very much a project that we're interested in having in the county. I think here's one of the things that I think is also an interesting thing that kind of got me excited because um, I've echoed some of the things that the city council as well as all of us commissioners have said is that quality of life is a paramount thing we've got to start addressing here in Henry County if we're going to start bringing in the businesses and, and the developments and the type of people that are going to put roots and stay here and say this is my county and I think it's interesting that my first tier two project in Splost is an amphitheater. I mean it's in district two that I put an amphitheater in and I was so excited when I saw this concept plan had an amphitheater built into it. I see a tremendous opportunity. I shared this with the county manager and kind of got he told me he got goosebumps over it is that how cool would it be if the county stays involved in this is that if we took, do some type of public private partnership because I knew when I put that money the million to two million dollars in the amphitheater for a tier, first tier two project that it probably wasn't going to be enough to get the, the, the amphitheater that's going to get us some of these big bands and, and acts that I think will bring the quality of life that will add but if we combine with a, a, a development 
this thing could be world class. I mean, it, and, and, I, and I don't, and, and I think it's kind of perfect in the timing that we, we had the, the pastor here this morning talk about public safety. I can talk about my life and my spiritual walk, and I don't believe in accidents. You know, maybe it's because I grew up Presbyterian, but when things line up, like they have with us having an amphitheater in District 2, this project being in District 2, and then also the things that we can do from an incentive standpoint of speeding up the timeline of this, I think this is all a big misunderstanding. I think Stockbridge should be commended that they just wanted to make sure this project moved forward, um, that this wasn't a tax grab or power grab. I'm hoping that my assurance that we do see this as a value add and a project that we want to jump on and also provide some opportunities to the developer, we'll kind of dial this down a few notches and, and let's just move the county forward and make something happen that's going to be a good thing. Thank you. Anybody else have any comments? Uh, the only comments I'm going to make is this is not our first rodeo, so you have to understand why this development company has to be annexed into the city of Stockbridge. You have to know they're playing both ends against the middle. You have to know, and we know they're negotiating with y'all, and y'all have to know they're negotiating with us. Uh, we've had meetings uh, last week. So it, it, it's a practical business deal for the developer when you're talking about a $200 million project. So it, at the end of the day, it, it's, it's going to be built one way or another. So it it's boils down to whether or not Henry County Board of Commissioners can live. We've got a list of incentives, and I'm sure y'all got a list of incentives. Uh, in order to one of us to pull this off, we might have to to uh, consolidate the the incentives. Otherwise, uh, I know it's just in the beginning of negotiating, but uh, just just keep in mind the the county. Obviously, any time it land is taken away from the county, there's a negative uh, aspect to it one way or another. So, uh, having said that, uh, I just want everybody to know that Henry County is. Uh, having meetings and negotiating and, and meeting with these people just like they're meeting with y'all. So at the end of the day, they're going to pick and choose whichever one can give them the most. So having said that, that's a fair assessment. So anybody else have any comments? If not, uh, I'll open the floor up for 15 minutes. And if uh, anybody would like to be heard, yay, nay, is uh, line up. And uh, they have 15 minutes total for the group. State your name for the record, please. Yeah, well, I'm... Uh Mayor Pro Tem Anthony S4, City of Stockbridge, uh, Chairman, Commissioners, uh, morning to you. I'm actually joined also by the rest of the staff here, the rest of the council. You've got Councilman Alexander probably speak individually as well. You've got Councilwoman Lakeisha Gant, Councilman John Blunt, and Councilwoman uh, Neat Robinson. So we're coming here together to bring this message to you. So well over 10 years or so ago, multiple develop developers have attempted to build a multi, mixed multi-use uh, development on the same parcel of land. During that time frame, we watched as developments of this type were emerged in other communities in the Atlanta metro area, such as Smyrna, Alpharetta, Roswell, and Decatur. While the demand of this type of development continues to grow, we have been unable to secure or solidify, solidify excuse me, a developer willing to commit to and invest in our community until now. RCP co uh, companies have been actively working with the, on this project as well over a year now. Several months back, RCP approached the city of Stockbridge to inquire about our willingness to work with them, the developer, and overcome all the challenges typically associated with the project of this type, of this type of nature. The city of Stockbridge has approached, were approached by them, and only after RCP it came to us, uh, and it, because it was a failed, they failed to receive any type of indication of willingness to work with the Henry County officials. Seeing the tremendous overall benefit uh, to the entire community, the city agreed that should RCP elect to annex into the city, we would commit to working with developers to help bring this project to fruition. RCP then took action to acquire the properties necessary to annex into the city in the same manner previously as uncontested annexations that we had in the past. So on February 5th, the city of Starbridge notified the county in an intent to annex this property, and obviously you, yeah, it was mentioned to you earlier. That brings us to today and brings the board, and I have the entire council with me at this point, to the crossroads with two clear options. Now, if you vote to, to eject this annexation request, you risk causing further under, uh, unnecessary delays, uh, which could ultimately cause the project once again to be rendered unfeasible, 
due to a lack of political will or foresight. What we'd like for you to do is choose today not to object to this annexation request and rather commit to assisting and not hindering the city of Stockbridge in this, in this particular effort so that we all can be able to benefit from this, okay? $10 million of annual tax revenues, increased loss and loss revenues, and overall economic uh, benefit for the entire uh, Starbridge community, Henry County itself. So uh, we don't want to continue to have the same barren type landscape and be left to wonder what could be done. What we like to happen and what we want to do is your actions today could determine the future landscape uh, of our community, which will reflect uh, the thriving new development and which much more sought after retail and housing uh, options for our citizens. Thank you. Thank you. I am Elton Alexander, and I'm speaking on behalf of myself, and the opinions expressed will be those of mine, and because we care at Henry County. Um, every day, gentlemen, I hear about the need, the desire, the passion that we have citizens in this community, and they want quality. We listen to them talk every single day about the lack of quality amenities in this community. We're looking for revenue sources, and we got one right here staring us in the face. The, world, the um, direction of the of metro Atlanta area and the region is using mixed-use development. Mixed-use development incorporates the best in planning. And if we look back over the course of time, what has really happened to put Henry County in this predicament that we're in, the clogged streets and the lack of revenue is the lack of planning. This is a master plan development that is world class in every phase. In dealing with the developer RCP, they are best in class. This is not their first rodeo. They just finished the development uh, in Huntsville, Alabama that is world class as well. They came to us, as Mayor Pro Tem Anthony Ford said, because they could not, according to uh, sources get a meeting with the county. They, could, they were not being heard. Their thoughts were not being uh, adhered to. They came to us because they knew that we were receptive to what they wanted uh, to accomplish in this community. And they actually followed some of the posts on our page and they saw the tremendous amount of feedback from citizens wanting this project to happen. We can tell you right here and now today that this project is in the right place in the hands of the city of Stockbridge. We will move it forward with vigor, desire, and determination with, you, with a unanimous vote. There will not be any dissension. It will be unanimous. Citizens have told us. We have listened. We will do everything possible to make this happen in our community. And getting that very funding the builder or the developer themselves at the ZAB meeting told us that they were willing to fund a police precinct at the development at their cost, at their cost. And I'd also like to say, I mean, Commissioner Preston spoke uh, as he said, which honestly we just heard him say. I sent them an email. I didn't get a response. You, 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 you responded, right? But you, we, there was no follow-up. I think there was no follow-up. Right. Right. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. You, know, well, you said there was no follow-up. You no, know, you said there was no response. Okay. And, I, and I, I mean, I'll read the email that I wrote back to you where I said this sounds like, these projects sound like incredible opportunities for our community. Clock is still ticking. There's a dialogue. I, that, that dialogue only goes in the, on, on the public comments. Okay, so there's no dialogue during this time. Uh, well, what I would like to say is the city of Stockbridge has a plan to fund that stop, find that amphitheater as well. We wanted, to, we partnered with them. We saw those plans. What we saw when we met with the developer was that they were frustrated extremely with what they had received on the county level. They were ready. They at that point they were they had their hands were up. I don't, you know, Mr. Preston. I know you personally, but at the same time. There was a lack of will, and there was a, a force out there, maybe not of that of your own, that vehemently opposed this and even voiced it to us on, 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 on several occasions. 
this force that came to us uh, objected to it being mixed use and having um, residential, a residential component. That is something that is the wave of the future. Not everybody wants to be on a two acre lot. People want small, low, low maintenance uh, requirements and also the Atlanta Regional Commission advises this. This project has already moved forward through all of the processes in uh, direct regional impact as well as we just received again the six, almost $17 million in road improvements in that area. I heard Douglas Hooker himself say, he told me and Ms. Robinson and the entire group that Jodico Atlanta South was mentioned at the South Metro Development. What a great program, great project that was. It was a shame to see that our development authority could not show the same uh, type of enthusiasm for the project because of the political wranglings going on in the community. I just want to say again, the city of Stockbridge is the very best place for this project. We have unanimous, unanimous consent to move forward with it and assist this world-class development in coming to our community. My name is Catherine Gilbert, 120 Willow Hill Lane, Stockbridge. Commissioner, Chairman, I'm, I'm glad to be here to have this opportunity to address you. I'm very encouraged, Brian, to hear your comments about wanting this, and, and Bruce, we talked earlier. Uh, I'm, I'm really glad to hear that there is a consensus, as you say, that this is the kind of development we want in Henry County. Uh, when I moved to Henry County 18 years ago now, I had to go to South Lakes to buy anything. Okay, uh, since Henry Town Center and the development at uh, uh, 2081 down here have opened up, I can tell you I probably haven't gone in out of, outside of Henry County to buy anything. I have always wanted to shop local, stay local. Your suggestion, uh, Commissioner Preston, that, that this development will bring tax dollars to Henry County to help us fund our police and fire services. And since I'm on the library board of directors, give our librarians the, the funds that they need. We have a degreed librarian who does not qualify for Habitat for Humanity because she doesn't make enough money, she doesn't work enough hours. There's something wrong with that picture. And this is the kind of development. Folks, a rising tide floats all boats. I served on the, the uh, Henry County Comprehensive Land Use Plan Steering Committee back in the uh, uh, 07, 08 period, uh, 06, 07, 08 period. I also served on the Atlanta Regional Commission LCI study for the Hudson Bridge, Jonesboro Road, Eagles Landing, Jodico Road, I-75 corridor. This is exactly what was envisioned in that LCI study. I think you need to dust that document off and take a look at it. I live in Stockbridge. I would love to see this be in Stockbridge, but more than anything, I want to see it where it's supposed to go. And where it's supposed to go is at the corner of Jodico and I-75 as the beginning of a new wave of life for Henry County. Do what you gotta do to work out the annexation issue, please. Thank you. Good morning. Um, I'm one of the newly elected uh, to the city council of the city of Stockbridge. And I, I mentioned that because on the campaign trail, we get a chance to meet a lot of citizens of the city of Stockbridge. And I'm kind of thrown back when I hear that we're looking at what can we benefit from it rather than what benefits the citizens from this project. That's our main focus. That's what everybody, any elective in here is for, the citizens, the citizens. Whether it be directly affect you, it can indirectly affect the, the county. 
But we've seen the citizens, they ask for this. On the campaign trail, I ran across many citizens saying, what about this, what about that? We don't want to come across that when they pass the city stop bridge like we do when we come down the interstate tomorrow and we see a project that never did come to fruition. We want to see this project happen and you all can make it start today. You are the engine that can start this project for us today. And I hope your decisions come in the place of knowing what the citizens want rather than what you all can benefit from it. Hello, commissioners, um, Tommy Smith and, and our honorable Bruce Holmes. Uh, my name is Kai Ashby, and I represent an organization called the United Urban League for Community and Economic Development here in Henry County. And I just want to make something perfectly clear first. Um, if, if each individual person can say yes, I would appreciate to, so that everyone can make sure that we know that we're all in sync. So are you all actually saying you agree with this project, um, Commissioner Bruce Holmes? Yes. Brian yes. Preston? Yes. Gary Barnum? Oh, yeah. Well, I think Smith, we're Bo Moss, we agree with the Blake? I am adamantly agreeing with this project. This is a great project. It's a wonderful area. I mean, we just put the bridge in. It's right where it needs to be. The, the separation between residential and commercial is perfect. You've got the residential on one side separated by a thoroughfare. Uh, you've got the commercial on the other. It's perfect. Okay, right so, so the issue is just the annexing. That's the issue where we're, we're having a problem yes, with that, I'm, right? I'm going to address that when, after the Okay, um, well, what I wanted to say is um, I represent um, a community of, of young people, youth. And we do have a problem in our community with our young children. Now, this project will not only just bring jobs in the community for the adult population, but for our young people, too. I heard the pastor talk about um, the crime that we have in our community, and a lot of that can be alleviated, alleviated if we were to bring in programs for our children. You know, we have a high teen pregnancy problem, we have a high juvenile delinquency problem here, and we don't have to have that. But we have nothing for these children to do after school. We have no community center for these children to attend, no extracurricular activities for them. We have the highest teen pregnancy rating that we've ever had in Henry County, 262 teen pregnancies. Out of the 262 teen pregnancies, only 133 gave birth. We had 129 aborted babies. This is right here in Henry County, and the numbers are steadily grow going up between the hours of three and seven, that is the teen pregnancy hour. But I'm, 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 I'm representing myself separately. I'm not with this group right here. So I think time, I should, I should be able to have a couple of more minutes to, more to just talk about this. The I can be a lot of two more minutes. Unless the board wants to extend it. We have a motion. We can, I don't mind extending it. Second, any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. So move, continue. Thank you, thank you. Um, we do have these problems. So we do have some uh, solutions um, in place to eliminate a lot of this. You're going to see a lot of these numbers go down when we bring in uh, programs like this. This is going to create all these wonderful jobs, opportunities for our entire community, not just the city of Stockbridge, but for McDonough, for Hampton, for um, Ola, for uh, all of the other you know, communities in uh, Henry County. We have to work as a collective community and not individually anymore. So um, I just wanna ask the, the board, the Henry County Board of Commissioners, if they could just work together, approve the annexing so that we can get this project started as soon as possible. Because the more we delay these things, generally you won't see it happen. 20 years ago, we had $2 million set aside, earmarked for a teen center in McDonough 20 years ago, and that money still sits there, collecting interest on $2 million, and we still don't have it. That's why we have the problems that we have in our communities. You're talking about the latchkey kids program, that the kids go home after school, that's when they get in trouble. I heard the pastor talking about um, uh, home invasions. Uh, these children are bored, they have nothing to do, so we can create these jobs to have them give them something to do after school, make money, learn a new trade, then we will be able to see a difference in our community and these numbers go down. Our crime numbers will go down tremendously. Our teen pregnancy will go down tremendously. The STD, STI problems that we have here will go down tremendously. We have to pay attention to our youth 
because they're going to be the ones who's going to be sitting in your positions very soon. Someone has to be the voice for these teens because adults just don't want to listen to them. But they are just as important as anyone else. And this project will not only benefit, as I stated, I know I'm being a little redundant, but I want to get my point across and I want to make it perfectly clear how important this project is for this county. So I hope we can all come to a mutual agreement and be able to annex these projects. So I just want to say thank you for the time. Thank you for um, com uh, commis uh, commis um, Councilman um, Alexander for inviting us. And um, thank you guys. Hi, Bo Moss. That's uh, my um, district uh, count, uh, commissioner. How you doing? Anybody else like to be heard? Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon. It's already afternoon. <laughs> My name is Judy Brannan and I live at 483 Mount Olive Road in Stockbridge. And my main concerns with the Jodico Crossing is the traffic situation. And my house faces the woods where all of this project is going to be. So when I open my front door, I can look right at everything. <laughs> it's hard enough to get out of my driveway now because since they black topped the access road to go to Target and all, you have to sit at my driveway and you have to wait for all the traffic to go. It's a 25 mile an hour speed limit. Nobody adheres to that. We had to get a back opening mailbox. So when I went and got my mail, I didn't get my backside knocked off. So things, um, I don't know exactly what it will take. We've heard that there would be a four lane road on Mount Olive, but we live on the main road, not where the KOA campground road that's Mount Olive also so I'm just wondering how that's going to affect us because we will be right there in front of, we're right in front of the woods so does anybody have any idea that would have to be worked out during the engineering uh, but I, I can't answer it have any of y'all ever driven down around that way? I have, many times. So, I, I was born and raised in Henry County. Well, that's good. Where the campground is in my youth, yeah, we used to camp there all the time. Right. Yes. But have you noticed the up traffic and the speeders? Is there some way you can get a police car to patrol more? All, all that will be addressed in the... Uh, uh, into engineering and just just to comment I, I will make a statement that that development is going to take place whether it's in the city or whether it's in the county okay okay and the the only difference is is these people are the developers is dealing with the city of start bridge and dealing with henry county uh they are asking for all these concessions uh and Depending upon who can afford the most, I suppose at the end of the day is who's going to get it. Uh, but to, if, if we were not interested in it as a group, we wouldn't be negotiating. Right. Now, I'm sure Stockbridge is negotiating. And I'm sure that uh, all their amenities that they've been offered is uh, privileged, just like I was at this moment here, is privileged. That's a whole page of it. And it's, uh, it all converts into to money. But if it's any way, that Henry County can negotiate a reasonable scenario, uh, we're gonna fight for it to be in the county. But uh, traffic will be uh, addressed. It may not be optimum, but it, it, okay. Whether it's in Henry County or whether it's in the corporate of Stockbridge, the traffic will basically be the same. So what I'm trying to say is the engineers will have to calculate how they're best handling. And it, it, it will end up being the same for Stockbridge as it does for Henry County. So the, 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 what I'm saying is the development is coming. It's just a matter of 
who's going to pay the most to get it. For it. <laughs> right, right now, it's in a, I'm sure it's in a contest. That's like a precinct, okay? Uh, they offered them a precinct. I, I guess they're wondering why we sitting over here. Okay, how about a fire station? Okay, is it going to be, they offer them brick, uh, we might use a, a hardy plank or something. But, but anyway, just to make a point, uh, they, the developers just, it's just uh, the way they do it. They, they're going to go with the best one that has the best deal. Right. Well, I have done some talking with Mr. Bonner and Mr. Gibbs right here and Sherry. And I just want to commend them for being so nice, so kind and helpful. I have never had people that talked to me like they did and showed respect. And even though I was asking stupid questions, I'm sure they helped me and they were very, very kind. And I appreciate that so much. And uh, my only other question was, um, if it gets annexed into the city of Stockbridge, will we have to pay city taxes also? If I will say this, if you end up being in the city of Stockbridge and in the event they have city taxes, I will say your chances are most likely that you would pay them. Okay. I, I'm just saying that's if you'll notice, I, I said in the event. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Who, who else would like? Yes, ma'am. Good morning. I'm Lakeisha Gant, and I'm a city councilwoman here in the city of Stockbridge. Um, and I just want to say that I was elected in 2013 to, and I started in 2014, and for the past two years. We, our staff and administration team, have worked very closely with these developers to get this project done. I would also like to say that it's very disappointing to hear from the developers, for anyone else, that you know they wanted this project done and they couldn't get it done through the county. So when they came to Stockbridge, and we've been working with them for two years, all of a sudden, the county wants the project. I want the county, it's disappointing because I want our commissioners to work with us and allow us to have this project annexed in. You saw the map, you heard from your attorney. I've, we've looked at this, we've been working on it for two years. It, it definitely crosses the line. The, to say that you're gonna possibly do a resolution to tie this thing up could kill the deal. That's what it really could do. And unfortunately, um, you know, so, and since 2000, I've been here since 2003, we have been talking about and heard conspiracy theories and heard about all the wonderful projects and big malls that were supposed to go right there on Jodico Road. We have that opportunity today to make that happen. And here we are again, tying it up because we're too busy worried about who it is. It's mine. No, it's mine. No, we want it. If you're agreeing that you want the development and you know that the city has been working with this developer, these developers for the past two years, we're asking that you go ahead and, and vote to annex this in, to work as a team with us. The city of Stockbridge, we don't have city taxes. You're still getting taxes through the county for the development. The development is good for the citizens, it is good for us, it's good for our county, and it's great for Stockbridge. Give us that opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Edward Tony, 894 Upper Wolvesey Road. I'm not against the project. I'm against the way that this is coming about. One is the citizens, I've, I've been doing a lot of knocking on doors, talking with the citizens. They feel like they're just being railroaded to where the city's kind of taken over without giving the board an opportunity to say, we're gonna do the right thing, we're not gonna do the right thing. We're not having that opportunity. So the citizens out there that I'm talking with saying, hey, we don't want the city of Stockbridge just running in here and taking over and saying, this is the way it's gonna develop. I'm talking about the Jodico Road, the Jodico Road, uh, 
Stockbridge, unincorporated Stockbridge, or in Hamilton? Yeah, where, where Stockbridge is talking about incorporating this, this Atlanta South, uh, Dodeco Atlanta South property. That's, I'm talking with people right around the uh, Chamber Road area, all those people that have to commute I-75. They're the ones that are, that are being affected by this, this development, which is already, according to the book, so there's going to be a 38,000 cars per day generator. Well, that's an awful lot of cars, you know, for commuters and all that to come out of this one development, not to mention when there are uh, events such as a, um amphitheater or something like that. Also, it's not always the best thing. You know, we want to try to develop in a, in a, in a positive way. A positive way would be, say, we could come in into it with 80% commercial development and say, then if it's working out, then we could go ahead and proceed further with, with the residential portion of that. So that's kind of where we are with that, and that's kind of what the people are thinking that I'm knocking on their doors. And they want to see, they think, for one thing, that they're going to be oversaturated with the retail, with the Jodico Road thing going on down there, too. I mean, the Jonesboro Road development going on, too. They're starting to feel like they may be somewhat uh, oversaturated with the retail. So, so that's some of the concerns I'm hearing out there, and that's, and that's the concerns that, they, that the citizens want the board to be able to have their decision before the city runs in and says, okay, we're going to take over and, and, and we're going to do what, you know, what the developer wants to do. Now, then the people over on, in District 2 will have to pay the price. They'll say, okay, now we're stuck with this development and we can't get to the interstate to go to work. So those are the things that we've been talking about. Like I said, we're, I don't think the people are opposed to the to the development. They're just opposed to the way it's being presented. Anyway, thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you. How, how many more people do want to be heard? Say again. No, I'm I'm just asking general. How many more people want to be? Well, what I'm going to do is limit it to five more minutes. If uh, but I want to make sure that. Okay, just 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 for record, I would. Uh, does anybody want to be heard after this young lady? Okay, I'm going to recommend that somebody move that we terminate uh, accepting public comments and limit it to five minutes and then it'll be terminated. Does somebody move in that direction? It appears nobody else wants to be heard, so we got one lady here and she looks like she could talk five minutes. <laughs> well, actually, no. Chair, I don't know about somebody, that. Would somebody move in that direction? Sure, I'll, I'll make that. Move. Have a motion to extend it, limit it to five minutes. Have a motion. Second. Have a second. Uh, any further discussion on favor raise your right hand so move I'm gonna start the clock at five minutes and you can begin now thank you um, chairman um, good to see you again sir and also good morning to the commissioners I I'm Neat Robinson and I'm one of the council members with the city of Stockbridge um, I wanted to say this because I've listened to everyone to me, it seems like this project has been ongoing with the city of Stockbridge. Um, I heard you say, don't allow the developers to play between the two, the city and the county. I will say this, this is a new day, and if the city of Stockbridge, to my understanding, has had the discussion, I'm asking the commissioners to please, let's work together. I spoke with um, Commissioner Prince yesterday because I was trying to get an understanding. He stated to me um, that the developers didn't address him directly. So with that being said, it's telling me that a lot of miscommunication has went forth with this development. Again, we're trying to move forward in our city. You're saying that it's going to happen regardless of who stands here. It's going to happen. So I'm asking you to allow the city of Stockbridge to have this development and the commissioners, the county, to work with us, to work with us. Because we're trying to do what's best for the citizens of not just the city of Stockbridge, the county as well. Please allow everyone to benefit from this. The city of Stockbridge has been working diligently behind the scenes. I've heard my colleague, um, Lakeisha Gant, saying that this is nothing new. So I want you to at least hear that she's saying they have been working on this. So again, I'm not going to take up five minutes. I'm asking you, you know, I, I sat there looking. A lot of you are not attentive to the speakers that are standing here. I'm asking you to please allow your heart 
to do what's right by the, all of the citizens. And if we're gonna start new for the city of Stockbridge, the city uh, and the county, we must start now. I want all of us to work together as a team so that way we can move this city, this county forward for all the citizens. So again, look deeply into your heart so that way at the end of the day, it's going to happen, but let's not play against one another. Let's start today by saying, okay, if the city of Stockbridge has been diligently working hard to get this done, let's be supportive so that way it, we can all work to together and have this done. And hopefully, um, Commissioner Preston, I haven't met you formally, but I'm hoping that you hear me today to know that this is not about Neat Robinson, it's about the county and the citizens of City of Stockbridge and also the Henry County citizens. Thank you so much for your time, for listening. Anybody else like to be heard? We've got a minute and 48 seconds. Seeing none, hearing none, I declare that the floor is closed for public comments. Council. Yes, sir. Does anybody have any questions or comments for council? If not, uh, I'd like to ask a question. yes, sir. This property is currently in the unincorporated section, correct? That's correct. I've heard that I've heard that the city of Stockbridge has been working on this project longer than the county has. Can I get some clarification on that? Because I'm worried the timeline might be a little skewed, and I want the public to understand that this is in the unincorporated part. The infrastructure that's been brought to this area. The bridge and everything that's been brought was a, primarily an effort where we, we went and brought a lot of these resources. The new additional money that's coming in for the connector roads, I know we've had staff that has been driving in on this. So I don't want, because it sounds like we're all in the same church. I know we're all related, but we also are all saying we want to approve this project. And now it's just a matter of who, who, whose is this that is entitled or is this a grab that has occurred? Because obviously I misspoke. I thought it was a miscommunication, but now I'm realizing that there's more at hand here that the infrastructure and everything that we've brought to this area and the investment now that the economy has come back, that there's more going on. And that disappoints me a, a, a touch. So can somebody clarify from staff when we started working on this versus when the city of Stockbridge was brought in so that we can know because we're all related. I heard that said. I mean, we're siblings, the city of Stockbridge and the county. We want this. I just don't want it misrepresented that we're trying to shut it down because they were there first and we're stealing this project from them. I think that is not a completely transparent and fair representation. The initial zoning application for this project has 14 on it. It was RZ-14-14, which indicates it was 2014 is when we received the initial application. So it's been, if it's 2016, so you're looking at roughly two years. Right. So City of Stockbridge wasn't first. And it's I, not I don't know if they were property. first or who, yeah. but it was our rezone application case number is RZ, the very first one is RZ 14-14. Right. Well, I can, re I can remember uh, when I was executive assistant that two things was happening. The bridge, uh, just before the economy went bad, the county, it, the board, uh, approved the bridge to be a 10-lane bridge to feed a $300 million summit that uh, it was an entity from uh, Clayton County that's going to Shia Landers, I think that's his name, but anyway, uh, he wanted two things and the county was negotiating and they built a bridge. He wanted a 10-lane 10, 10 bridge very similar to Eagle's Landing. The second thing he wanted was a western corridor. Okay, if you look in Splash four of Sprosh three, they had $17 million indicated in there for the Western Corridor. And this was back in seven, eight or nine or whenever it was to put the Western Corridor to open up that whole uh, Dr. Chin's property. So uh, last week, I think, uh, I guess the last week and the last several weeks, uh, GDOT uh, sent a letter down to uh, our assistant manager indicating that they had uh, awarded as like $16.8 million to build the, uh, what we call the Western Corridor through that area. So uh, I just wanted to throw that out because it's, uh, the county has been, that, that's been on the radar scope for six or seven, eight years now that I know of. Now it wasn't called uh, uh, Jodico 
crossing, but it was called the summit, if I, if I recall correctly. Anyway, having said that, I Mr. yield the Chairman, floor. Chairman, I can tell you there have been plans for some version of a project like this on this property for upwards of 10 or 15 years. Whether they've been presented to the city or the county, I, I don't know. Um, as far as, I think as far as at least your, your uh, executive level staff probably became aware of the reality of this program. I don't want to speak for Mr. Bonner, but probably within the last three weeks or so. That's when I became aware that this was a, an immediate about to happen thing. And I'm not typically aware of rezoning projects when they're working their way through the system. Uh, so I, I couldn't speak to how long it's the reality of this new project has been knowledge in the county. And I don't know to what extent the 14 zoning application is different from the current zoning application. I haven't looked at all of them. There are a couple of important factors about sort of how these big projects happen. And one of the important things you have to look at is a project of this scale is what the Atlanta Regional Commission calls a development of regional impact. And when you have a development of regional impact, as you all know, the plans are submitted to the Atlanta Regional Commission and they return back a list of conditions. And those aren't zoning conditions. What those conditions basically say is, okay, local government, if you want to continue to receive funding from us for things like road projects and such, you have to do all of these projects. Somebody has to do all of these projects in connection with this, with this project. And the ARC will tell you, we don't care who does them. They just have to happen. And if they don't happen, if you don't make progress toward getting these done, we can reduce or pull funding for certain of your other road projects. And without seeing the, the DRI report on this, I'm willing to bet the overwhelming majority of those off-site improvements that the Atlanta Regional Commission will be recommending will be things that fall outside of the city of Stockbridge. It will be things that will, will kind of necessarily fall upon the Board of Commissioners to either do or not do. Um, and I think that's an important thing to look at is, is how those off-site improvements, where will the funding come from, what will the funding source look like? Who will be sponsors of the GDOT pro projects that happen? And, and I'll say this, as, as the board knows, we had a big meeting with the developer that involved a, a handful of commissioners, uh, management staff, department heads from virtually every, pro every department that would be involved in this project start to finish. And I informed the developer at that project that this, this objection could very well happen. They understood it, they understand why. Um, now, how they will react, I don't know, but this, if the board does object today, it won't be a surprise to the developer. They, they were made aware of it. I've had some ongoing conversations with, the, with their attorney, and we've had ongoing conversations about what type of assistance, what type of incentives, both direct incentives and indirect incentives that, that the county could offer to help this project happen. So I think it's important that you and, and people watching are aware of that. We haven't come to any final conclusion about here's the universe of what we, we can offer because we've dragged in the development authority. We've dragged in some government financing people who do public private financing and projects like this to try to get their take on it. It's a, it's a moving target. And you know, the bad news is if the county intends to object, it has to happen today. It would certainly be better if the world had more time to sit and contemplate this thing. But an objection has, has to happen to today. I spoke to Mr. Gibbs in the Planning and Zoning Department. If the county is to do this project, we can expedite that zoning process. And we've in fact committed to the developer that we would do so and have the zoning completed within a matter of a month or six weeks. And it would take, it would take some work, but it's work that we've all committed to already do. Anybody else have any questions? District 4. If it was annexed into the city, what, what kind of time frame are they looking at on rezoning this? It would go to the city um, mid-March, potentially. It's already scheduled. It, well, it's already been to the Zoning Advisory Board for the cities. Right. March 10th. So it, it could happen quickly. I don't know that we could make, I don't know that the county could make that schedule, but we could make one soon thereafter. Um, can you give me some dates? We're still talking Within March. Within a matter of a couple of weeks, probably. We would have to, well, a couple of things. It would depend on everybody's willingness to do a special meeting, a called meeting, because 
Otherwise, your regular meeting schedule would be March 15th, which I don't think we could make, or April, the first meeting in April. But I saw a note that that's school spring break, and traditionally we don't have those meetings. So if you did it at the next regular meeting, it would be the second meeting in April. But if both the Planning Commission and the Board of Commissioners is willing to do a called meeting, you could accomplish it much quicker. I couldn't support the denial if it's that far off. I would like to see it um, before mid-March. I would, like to, see, be, I would, uh, like, a, I would like to see a full... So it would be as quick as we can publish a notice. We, you're required by law to give a publish a notice 15 days prior to the hearing. So it's, we're not talking about a call that week. week. Well, I, you could if you want. I, 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 I don't mean, that would be up to the board. of this magnitude to do something this significant. To it would be up to the board. There would be I, I know it there would be, be an advertisement in the paper. So you could you could do it if that was what the board chose. Any further discussion? Well. I, I just I don't mind I, my thought is if we need to do a special called meeting if we need to do it the week of the 15th but maybe do it on the Thursday instead of the Tuesday if it gives staff enough time I don't know I, I recognize that we need to measure twice cut once but our goal is not to slow this process down we do want to the, the objection is is that like as you just heard from council we have brought in the infrastructure and then to have somebody come in and take this project from us would be a, a, essentially a resource grab from us. And that's not appropriate. And that's, that's what I think is, it, it, it hurts the goodwill of our family if somebody comes in after we bring all the structure and the resources and then somebody comes in and says, you know what, we're going to take it. We'll take it from here after you've done the investment. And that's the part, I can't support that. And that's why when I will make the motion to object it's not against the project. It's the, that we want this in Henry County since we've done a lot of the work for it. We have a resolution to that effect. Is that what you just did, put a motion? Wait a minute. We, we got District 2 just made a motion. I, think. I, I said I will. Amend. Oh, you will. Okay, I, I yield will. the floor District 5. Can you amend your motion to include that the, entire, that the Board of Commissioners will approve unanimously to support this project and that we will approve to move forward um, mid-March in terms of um, uh, the zoning requirements well, for the project? Can, I, can't, I can't tie their votes. I mean, we've heard every one of them say yes, but but I don't know that I can, I can say that they will say, you know. There's two questions. It's really the advertising date that we're up against. We shared that with a developer. It's still going to go very quickly. 15 days. 15 days is what I, we, we were going to post earlier so we could have them dovetailed. And it's just adding another day or two if you want to do a call meeting. If you don't, it would just go to the 15th uh, or the one after. I've just got to meet the advertising requirement. But in, in all fairness, I think the public should know also is when we got the notice, I let the board know immediately, and I started making the notions to go back and we, to meet with the developer. What was the motivation to change horses? We had everybody come up uh, and talk to us at a meeting last week. And the developer even said it was their intention to annex into, I'm sorry, uh, to stay within Henry County, uh, unincorporated area. So they had always intended that to be the case, but somehow, like you said, Commissioner, it is a question of miscommunication. They were of the impression that it wasn't favorable. And I checked with each one of you before I made the next step, and I didn't get any reluctance to it. And I go back to a meeting we had literally months ago regarding intensity and densities of zoning and where would you want to put this project? Where would you want to put these residential components? Where would you want to put these amenities but closer to your transportation corridors? It seemed to protect both interests that the board has expressed all along. So I'm unfortunate, I didn't mean it <clears throat> to trigger all this, but it was never revealed that the board was very supportive of it. That's the miscommunication that's occurred. So we're on track, we met with the developer, we now got the incentives they're asking for. Our staff is working through it now to try to find a resolve of what we can do. Uh, and if there's an opportunity to partner uh, with the city of Stockbridge to help bring those, that job together, we're certainly going to apply for that. I, 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 I'm just going to say I can't support this resolution if we can't guarantee that we're going to um, approve this by mid-March. I'd rather for Stockbridge to And, and there's two things that could happen. Um, it, it appears the earliest we could meet the legal advertising requirement and have a meeting would be the week of March 21st if you had a called meeting. 
Secondly, you can't legally obligate yourself today as to how you'll vote during that week or whenever this comes up. But we could put a provision in the resolution. We could put a whereas that says that during, the, during today's meeting, every member of the Board of Commissioner expressed their support for the project. We could put that in there, which would show, I think that's a pretty strong public statement of your support. It wouldn't be legally binding. Any one of you would have the legal right to change your mind and vote no. You always remain, you always would have that. Can right. we set a date, um, an estimated date today as well for the next meeting to approve you the project? Today, the 22nd, would be a no. date. Let me share my thoughts now. The deal is, the incentives is going to be the, it's going to be the catch-all. Okay, if we object today, which I'm prepared to object to it, obviously, for many reasons, we can change our mind and, and undo our objection. But if we do nothing, or if we allow it, then if the concessions comes in, then it, it may be in our favor, but we've, lo we've lost out. But the incentives, I don't know about the city of Stockbridge, the incentives on our end are, are, are pretty significant. I mean, dollar-wise, uh, it's significant. So it, at the end of the day, all this may be moot anyway with the county because we may not can afford it like y'all do. So. Uh, we know who got all the money, and it's not us. So and, and Mr. Chairman, there are some um, other some discussions of some other forms of incentives that aren't just somebody writing checks and buying things. There's there's some the other. Of us is uh, it all equates to a dollar amount. That's right. Yeah, yes. I've had some discussions yes. with their representatives that that they're prepared to have a discussion that moves beyond that to more longer term. Yes, they might settle for this, but right now. But these would be, these types of incentives would be longer term, the same types of incentives you get for any economic development project. And, and those are project incentives that we can offer that are bigger, maybe, I don't know if they're bigger money-wise, but they're bigger in thinking than just here's a check. Well, you know? to play one end against the other, as you well know, they told us, if y'all would give us these incentives, we will withdraw our annexation from Stockbridge. If you remember that, now, that's, that ain't happening either because it's uh, it has to go through the process, and when you're talking multi millions of, of, of dollars and, and doing this and limit it to thirty days and uh, somewhere down the road, I I would be willing to let Stockbridge have it, but I'm I'm not willing to do that now because of our investment of our infrastructure. That's me now. So, having said that, we got to move in a direction. If not, we'll move on. And yes, sir. I, I'm only that get council's thoughts on it if because i think commissioner holmes just wants to to kind of calm down the constituents as well as the, you know city of stockbridge because i know he represents the city of stockbridge too if we've heard that we could add a note into our resolution that showed that we all supported the project and then was staff saying we could have a meeting by march 31st so hopefully we could do it around the 23rd 24th somewhere in there but we could put you know 22nd would be the earliest date. I want to make sure we can get the advertisement in. There. But but just to just to give us enough flex, could we put the 31st and that would, you know, but we try to do it, you know, sometime that week of the 22nd. Um, is that is that amenable to, to staff on and yes, reasonable? Sir. Yes, sir. And it also gives us an opportunity to start working backwards with a developer and see where we're at with our incentives. You okay. Know. Voting to approve the project. So the that would be, be a vote ladies. on the rezoning of the project. Yes, that's, well, that's what they're that's seeking. Is the rezoning, okay. which is step one of you know a thousand steps before the project really goes into effect. Question: Is this conferred by the zoning advisory board? Not the counties. I mean, we, we, with the county would have to. We would do a. Well, has it? Has it, has it been heard by the plant? The zoning? Because doesn't it? It didn't process it's, to go. It's scheduled already for March 10th for the zoning advisory board, and that's the county's rezoning. Okay, March 10th already. Already said. Okay, because so I, we'll I, I knew it has to go that through that. Okay, all right. Just for clarification, this case is scheduled to go to the Zoning Advisory Board on March 10th, and right now it has been advertised uh, with a county case number, but the request is for to go from County RA to, to City of Stockbridge PTD. Um, so that's where we are right now until the Board of Commissioners get further. It can. Yield to four? No. Yield to four? 
when you say amended, are you saying the actual how we advertise it? Or are you saying the zoning advisory board changing or their motion? What are you? What are you? I mean, does it have to? No. I, I think I think if it has been advertised, and there is a public hearing, I think that satisfies the zoning the zoning procedures law. I, th I think it does. Um, I'll have to talk to Dante to see if there's any quirks to it. Okay. But uh, people often. You know, people often start off with one application, end up with something else. That happens all the time. But I'll, we'll just have to, we'll spend a little time looking at it. Is it, is it in the program? I see how many people the applicant. Do we not want to give them a chance to get back? Okay. Okay. The, the, I mean, worst case would be we run a new notice for another ZAB meeting and do a ZAB meeting the day or a couple of days before the Board of Commissioners meeting. That's, that's feasible as well. We'll figure it. We'll sort through it. It, it, is, it is an achievable, solvable Timing is a problem only to the extent we have to have 15 days notice. I'm just going to throw this out. This thing's been out there for 10, 15 years. $300 million project. Now we're trying to condense it down to 30. So I'm, I, I, it's well, beyond me. My thing, the only reason I'm asking these questions is, you know, I know Commissioner Holmes has concern because it, it, rightfully so. I mean, district Stockbridge is in his district and we're trying to work. But I, I think I think we've got this thing kind of brought down to the point that we would want our citizens as well as the, the people that are going to make the investment in our community to recognize we're going, we're going to step up. And, and I think that's the, and this is going to be good for the county. It's going to be good for Stockbridge. It's going to be good for Henry County. It's good for all stakeholders, and it's a win for us all. So with that, I'll make the motion um, to authorize the resolution objecting to the annexation. However, it should be noted in the file that there was 6 0 support for this project in the unincorporated Henry County. And we are going to expeditiously move this forward through the county as, as the applicant works through. To, uh, uh, a resolution just to add that. Yeah, just to, just to note that we had 6-0, that the, that the, you know, let it reflect that we had 6-0 support. Where are you gonna put that? I would suggest we add a, a one more whereas right before where it says now therefore. Yep. So that would be a whereas and not a now therefore. Right. I mean, you're just stating that this is what happened during the meeting. Okay. You put that in the form. You put that in the motion, right? Yes. We have a motion. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. All opposed, so moved. Thank you. Stephanie, would you give us a copy of this when you put that? Would, would you be kind enough to give us a copy when you put that language in here? Thank you. Resolution authorizing staff to negotiate and present to the Board of Commissioners a proposal to lease county property. Patrick. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, 5970 East Lake Parkway is the old abandoned fire station number seven. It's located on East Lake Road in, at the intersection of 155. It's a, essentially an out parcel to the Kroger Shopping Center that's there. It has been vacant, used for storage for some 15 years maybe now, maybe not that long, but near about. On the rear of the property is a uh, emergency tower. I think it's got sirens for things like tornado warnings and things like that. And the proposal from Commissioner Prince has been that we find a way to turn that property into productive use. It's a great location. It's at a very active commercial corner. It is a building that needs some work, but it is a serviceable building. There may be a use, an appropriate use for that building, and there is a, a potential to turn that business, turn that property into a successful business. So what we've done to this point is we've gone as far as we can go with sort of the behind the scenes unofficial conversations to make it happen. What we're looking for is authorization from the Board of Commissioners to allow us to actually put some resources towards exploring this a little more in a little more detail and bringing it back to you for a final proposal. What we anticipate looking at, what we anticipate doing is making this lease sort of a flow through through the Development Authority. They've got more flexibility on leasing conveying property than we do. Uh, but we would, the Board of Commissioners would approve the terms of the lease. Those terms would flow through the Development Authority's lease and the lease to the individual. Accompanying this request is also authorization to allow the staff to initiate a rezoning of this property to the C3 zoning district. 
It's currently zoned C2. By zoning it to C3, we open up the potential uses, including an automotive repair facility, which is, Dante disappeared, which is the, the more comprehensive zoning category. Uh, we, there's a couple of issues we will have to work through. We'll have to make sure that we, we continue to have proper access to the 911 tower in the back of the property, which is really easy. We can make that happen. And there's some improvements and repairs that need to be made to the building, and we'll need to take, in, take those into account. Our anticipation is that we'll put the burden of those cash outlays on the tenant and work out a way to allow him to, to be reimbursed if the, lease, if the tenancy is, is terminated by the county early. But that's, that's where we stand today. I don't know if, if you have any questions. The deal is not made. There's no, there's no deal. We don't have a rental amount yet. We don't have a, a term or any of that stuff. Our, our hope is I've, I've reached out to some appraisers to give me rough numbers of proper rental rates, and I've gotten a giant range of proper rental rates. My thinking is that if you authorize us to move forward, I'll get an actual appraisal of what the proper rental rate, rental rate would be, and we'll have a better benchmark to work off of. I have two questions. One is, is the Board of Commissioners going to be dealing with a DDA, or is the uh, corporation going to be dealing with a DDA? Board of Commissioners. Board of Commissioners to the Development Authority to the ultimate tenant. Second thing is, uh, and I've just, I, I sent an email out to the board, uh, and, and uh, I sent it to Commissioner Prince. Over the several years, we've had, I don't say many, we, I know we had three or four people that made an inquiry to lease that out. So I would like, uh, you know, if we know these people, to advertise it once we get to some kind of leases, make it available, and that way they can uh, make an offer to lease it. Uh, they, they would have a fair opportunity to, to lease it as well. So having said that, I don't have a problem with that. I recognize District 4. Okay, well, let me uh, back up a little bit and tell the citizens of Kellytown what we're doing out here. Um, we're all aware that I have an abandoned fire station on the main thoroughfare running through uh, Kellytown on the East Lake Extension. The building looks terrible and we're not making any money off of it. I looked into selling the building, but we have a um, 911 tower on the back of the um, property and I can't sell it. I need to hang on to that uh, tower. It's for a 911. Um, we may have to service it. We may have to replace it. I don't know, but I, I can't sell that building or property. So what we're looking at doing is, is you know, which should make sense in, in, in government, we're going to take an empty building we're going to make it look nice, landscape the area, put it back in service, and generate some revenue that's going to go back into the citizens' pockets. And that's really the main thing that we're trying to do here. Um, I am, to answer your question, Chairman, the Board of Commissioners will be leasing the building to the Development Authority, and the Development Authority will be leasing it out to a private individual. So how they... Uh, put out the if they put out an RFP or if they put out something like that but so that citizens are understanding what the county's role in all this is going to be um, we're actually looking for someone who is going to do uh, all the engineering plans all the construction bringing it up to code and uh, we're going to amortize that over the life of the uh, lease um, the county is not looking to spend any money we're not going to do any of the improvements at all we're not going to do the drawings at all. We're not going to do anything to that building that is going to be put into a private person's hands, and they will be spending their money to benefit our community. So I feel it's a good move. I really think, you know, we have too, many, too much property in the county already, and I think we should be doing positive things like this with our property. With that being said, um, we can move on. And I... You made the move in that direction? Well, is oh. any other questions? Sorry. Okay. I yield for District 1. That how long of a lease would be looking at? Ten years? Well, that's really up for negotiation. Uh, I think in my mind it probably depends on the nature and extent of the improvements the tenant will have to do. If, if, if there are simple fixes within the property, probably a shorter term lease. But if it's extensive improvements, I don't think you can expect a tenant to make extensive improvements for a short term lease. Right. So we'd have to push it out a little further. We've, um, we've talked about different terms, but it, we haven't really come to come to a consensus at the staff level about how long that lease would be. All right, thanks. Anybody else have any comments or questions? If not, we have a resolution in the book. Somebody wants to move in that direction? 
I'd like to move to approve. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Second. Second, District 1. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign, so moved. Resolution amended, Resolution 15-181, Fiscal Year 2015-16 Budget, to modify the county fiscal policy. Council. Mr. Chairman, several uh, several meet board meetings ago, the board expressed a desire to amend the portion of the fiscal policy that required each and every adjustment to an employee's salary to go before the Board of Commissioners. That was included in this past year's in the 2015-2016 fiscal policy that's attached as part of your budget. The proposal before you is to authorize the county manager to approve salary increases, grade changes, reclassifications, and or the creation of new positions, provided there are sufficient funds in the respective department's budget to fund those actions. So he couldn't, the county manager would not have authority to raid one department to another department if there's enough money in Department X's budget to approve salary adjustments. The county manager would have that authority to do so. That is generally how it's been most years in the past. As it is now, every raise, every adjustment has to come to you for vote, and that's it's a it's a little cumbersome to do that. It potentially politicizes every raise and every salary adjustment, and this should be a process that is that places more responsibility on the department heads and the manager, sorry about that, to ensure that the raises they make make sound fiscal sense because they're limited within that budget. And that's, that, that's what the resolution authorizes, would take the individual adjustments out of your hands, place them in the county manager's hands. Let me tell you uh, how it got there. Ever since I can remember, the county manager had the authority to do that. Uh, recently, like last several years, uh, we was in a position to where that system was totally abused. And it created a tremendous amount of uh, problems within the department when the director unannounced got a $10,000 a year raise and employees got nothing. So that's why that ended up in that budget. Uh, and then since then, management's changed and uh, it, uh, I think we need to go back to it. I've said that uh, the last time we had it. So, before there is a one clarification that Ms. Sorrow is asking for. Is it asking for, can I move money around within the, the department across the bottom line? So if they're funded, I can move things up. That's what that appears what it says. I would probably keep it within the salary constraints. I'm not going to move things out that were budgeted. Um, if they're operational pieces of it. If there were some substantial changes that allowed the operationals to have a transfer to do some more salaries, we didn't do our budget right. So I'm, I'm going to try to restrict it in my mind. I'm going to be thinking if there's salary savings in salaries that I would consider those, those rate change requests. Traditionally speaking, a county manager, if nothing else, got to board, if nothing else, just a memorandum and said that they proposed doing certain things. Uh, but in in the past, it just got out of whack, and, and it got so convoluted that uh, HR couldn't keep up with all the ro all the raises that was being passed out. But uh, Mr. Chairman, this this ordinance is written to allow the manager to move money within the departmental budget. If you want to restrict it to just within the salary section, that's fine. But the problem that could create is maybe there's a, a department that's got a some unspent money on paper and in order for him to move the paper budget office supplies budget into salaries if you restricted it to within salaries he'd have to come to you i think you i think what what you're hearing is the manager saying i'm not going to make a significant change in the department's budget this would allow him to make some changes and he would just have to be responsible to you to make sure he doesn't do doesn't exceed that um but I, i'll make i'll amend it however however you want to amend it or we we're looking at something else, Minute Vice. They may have to be another policy change. Can I recommend we table this to the next meeting just in order to move us on? It maybe have to be some other changes that are occurring in our policy, so I would ask the board table it at this time. Somebody want to move? We table this Sorry, issue. Patrick. have a motion, District 5. Second, District 3. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. So moved. Uh, 
UK fiscal policy. Uh, we deleted uh, splash A. We're going to move down to B, resolution approving purchase of two new 2017 International 7500 dump trucks using splash four funds. Mr. Burke Halter. Chairman, Commissioners, good afternoon. The vote of the Henry County approved the SPLOS 4 referendum, which included funds for the Henry County Department of Transportation construction equipment replacement. The SPLOS Department is requesting authorization to use SPLOS 4 funds to purchase two new 2017 International 7500 dump trucks from Rush Truck Center using the state contract. The total purchase price for each new 2017 International 7500 dump truck, including delivery, is $114,318. The total cost for two of the trucks is $228,636. Funds are available in the SPLOS 4 Henry County DOT Construction Equipment Replacement Account, SP4009. Staff recommends approval. I'll take any questions if you have any. Anybody have any questions? If not, we have a resolution in the book. Is somebody moving in that direction? We have a motion to approve District uh, 3. Thank Second you. from District 1. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. I'm going to make a chairman uh, discretion. Uh, we're going to uh, take a five minute recess. Thank you. Because apparently we can all go out at one time and come back, because I have to go as well. So we're going to take a five minute recess. And we'll come back at uh, 10 minutes after lunchtime, 12, 10. <laughs> 